It's gonna storm. <laughs> you can tear down that valley like a son of a gun. I've been afraid of storms ever since I was a little kid. No, really? <laughs> yeah, I've had this dream about five or six times where I'm in a thunderstorm. Mm-hmm. And it's raining really hard. It sounds like pebbles when it hits the ground. I can hear it. I try to block out the sound with my hands, only it doesn't work. It just keeps getting louder and louder. And the rain turns to blood. And the blood washes away in little rivers. And the sound stops. With a spectacular segment, we have a very special guest in the dungeon. His his microphone's a little more old and rusty, and the wires are all shredded. But you, I think we can make him out. His name is Michael Bates. What's up, guys? The man with the last name. Yeah. Thank you for having, you for having me in the dungeon, man. It's it's been a, uh, just uh, it's an honor. It's a spectacular segment. <laughs> I had to throw it in there. No, it's an honor for us, bro. Thank you so much, man. We've been talking to Michael for what, dude? Like two or three months now? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, because, uh, you know, Harbid was like a sinking ship, and, you know, I couldn't do it myself anymore. And, uh, you know, I said, let's get a team of writers. And, and Mike actually came to me, and he said, hey, man, I used to write here and this and that. I was thinking about getting back into it. So I said, well, hey, maybe I can hook you up with a job or something. So. He's been doing it. He's been doing it great. And, uh, hey, uh, you're the man responsible for our last few shows, dude, all those topics. So thank you. <laughs> oh, man, it's my pleasure, man. Just uh, you're, you're the one that went to bat for me, you know, so, hey, yeah, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, especially that porn topic was your responsibility. <laughs> what? That's all I do. I love you how know? you're blaming that on everyone <laughs> who, who wasn't there at the time. You guys were conspiring. I see you. I see you. Uh, hey, uh, you're a good dude, though. We've been meaning to have you on for a while. And, uh, yeah, like Alex said, all I could imagine when you said going down with the sinking ship there is just Alex with, like, a little cup, like a little pail, just, like, trying to fucking shovel water out of a fucking boat. Uh. And, and then Michael Bates is walking by, and he's like, help me! <laughs> yeah, and he's like, I got you, man, I got you. And you guys turned it around and killed it. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I think... Um, that that was the first time that Horribid was legit for a long time. Yeah, for a while. Yeah, there was just nothing going on, so it was great to see a uh, constant uh, flow of uh, of good material, of good shit again. So so props to you, to you assholes. Yeah. Well, more Mike. When I was doing it all by myself for two months, and then when Mike came in, I actually backed off and I focused more on the show and things like that. And, and, my, and Michael has uh, the illest uh, name ever. Am I, yeah. am I right? Michael Myers and Norman Bates? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, now, did you tell him your middle name? Um, yeah. My middle name is Anthony. Oh! Aww, so I was hoping it was Leatherface. <laughs> That's insane. That is crazy, dude. <laughs> 
Now, what is it like going through your life with the last name Bates? Like, uh, when you say it to people, you're like, hi, I'm Michael Bates. Growing up in school, man, it, you know, kids would poke fun at it and stuff, you know, Norman Bates, oh, ha, ha, you know. But, um, you know, a lot of people uh, can't understand me because I'm from the South, but I try my very best to uh, pronounce my words correctly. And people think I'm saying beach, you know, so it's like, I don't know. But, uh, you know, it's just a name. <laughs> Michael Beats? Yeah, Beats or Beach. No. <laughs> Michael Beach. I don't know. It doesn't have the same cool ring to it, I don't think. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> you told me that you listen to the ghost shows, and you have your own Shadow Man. Um, check, check this shit out. I'm hyping this up. I'm uh, hyping it. The, the year was 1998. <laughs> A good friend of mine, Jason Harwell... And I were sitting at the top of his driveway in, a, in his car, or in my car, Monte Carlo, like 1984 Monte Carlo. And uh, we were smoking pot, and it was like 2 in the morning, and it was a good thing that we were. Because uh, and Jason, <laughs> by the way, was a guy that was good about picking up on in intuition type things, you know. And uh, so we'd been like previously in the day cruising around in his car. It was like an old police car that he got in an auction. And uh, this thing was parked down by his... Uh, by his house. This was his parents' house back then. And uh, we're at the top of a gravel driveway, and uh, 30 minutes go by, and he's just like, you know, he, he says something like, uh, man, I feel like something bad's going to happen. And I was like, dude, don't say that, you know, because, you know, he would always pick up on stuff. And, uh, you know, a little time passed, and uh, we're just sitting there doing our thing and talking or whatever. And then he, he looks up, like forward, you know, and, and he goes, <gasps> And uh, it terrified me, and I, I wouldn't look. You know, I just looked at him, and I was like, what, man, what? And he just pointed, and I looked down at his car, and uh, it looked like someone was almost like just there was some movement down in the front of his car. You know, the, the back end of the car was facing us, but it was, you know, further on down the driveway. So um, it looked like someone was uh, tampering with his car, and it just kept on, like, you could see something was going on. And this this all took place in a matter of, like, maybe a, one minute. But um, so it all goes, uh, I mean, there's this creepy vibe in the air. And uh, I swear to the story on my granny's good life, by the way. But um, there's, like, almost like uh, lava. You know how lava looks, you know, like lava drips or whatever? Yeah. <clears throat> it starts coming, coming out from underneath the engine, like, dripping onto the ground. And it's just like, you know, just drifting. And, uh, and it was just thinking about it now, it's just, it's, it still terrifies me. But, um, you could clearly see that there was some sort of a figure doing this. And then all of a sudden, this thing like rises up and just shoots off into the trees. I mean, just like, whew. what? And then right after that, that moment, the front end of his car went up in flames. And I'm like, holy shit. Whoa. I reached my keys, and I'm like, oh, cranking the car, put it in, you know, putting it in the reverse and getting out of there. And, you know, back then, cell phones weren't so available, and we hit the local store and called 911. And uh, he, just, he, he called, actually, he called his sister first and said, you know, get out of the house. The house is on fire, because, I mean, this thing was parked right up on the house. And uh, then he called 911, and uh, we drove around for, like, 15 minutes because we were just afraid of it, you know, coming back and exploding or something. You know, we don't know what it's going to be. And uh, we get we get back, Baked. And, and there was like fire trucks everywhere, and uh, his dad standing out in his underwear. This is like two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and back then, it wasn't boxers. Yeah, this is Brees, man. And he he had a <laughs> he had a water hose, you know, just screaming and cussing. It was just so so crazy, man. Okay, um, so what did they say was the cause of this? They they never determined it, you know. It actually sounds like the Mothman. Yeah, I mean, you know, with, oh, so like the way sick. he looked, and then like the flying off, and the, I mean, I don't know. It just sounds really creepy. And Whoa. Hmm. wow, dude! Yo, that shit gave me goosebumps the other night. Uh, he was talking to me and told told me that story, dude. It bugged me out. I was like, all right, uh, I have to move now from my basement somewhere else, preferably in a well lit area. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it might be a guy doing that, but then it, except for the part where he whisked off into the tree. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, there's that. Yeah, there's that part. It was clearly like a shadow figure. So whenever I saw oh. the very first Final Destination, 
I got to the part where the uh, you see the shadow figure or whatever in the in the mirror, the chicks in the bathroom. And uh, man, it freaked me out because you know that came out after I had this experience, and now I've never seen or never had the desire to watch any of the other Final Destination movies just because of right. that. You know, it just it just one of those things that bugged me out, man. I never had the desire because the second one sucked. Oh, for real? You like the second one? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just felt like making a joke. Oh. All right, so wow, that's great, dude. I mean, I'm sorry you went through that. Oh, that's cool, man. I think uh, my friend was. You know, he it was his car. You know, and it was wow. just it shook him up. You know, but uh, yeah, if you if you ever, I mean, you know, I know you don't know the dude, but if you ever had a chance to talk to him, if you ever if you ever talked to the dude, you know, you'd get the same story. I mean, it's just like because we we actually talked about it uh, last week when I saw him. So I mean, it's he still talks about it with you. Wow. Yeah, Jamie's mad that it closed the door. He what? The- <laughs> I mean, what did what did your shadow guy do? Oh, he was peeking oh. around the door from the bathroom. <laughs> and, oh, oh. It he was did, What's up, freaking me out, man. I, I could see him in the reflection of my television. I was lying in bed, and I was looking at the TV, and I could see the – I mean, it was off. I was just looking at it, you know, as I was about trying to drift off, you know, how you just look around. I could see the reflection of someone, it looks like, leaning into view from the bathroom door. And – I turned around and it was still there. You have a TV in your bathroom? You know, no, in the bedroom. Oh. I'm in the bedroom, oh, but I could bedroom. see I could see the bathroom door. Oh, from... not yeah, because I made the joke. Maybe he was pissing and he kept leaning over to see. Right, to make sure open. I wasn't coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember my bad jokes. So I um. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I just I bolted. I I just took off. Yeah. I got out of bed. I threw on some clothes. I. Grabbed my dog and I <laughs> went to my friend's Grab house. Your at dog. Five. Well, I'm not gonna leave her behind. He was watching you grabbing his dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike, you're into horror crazy right now. So, I want to ask you, you know, like, what do you think about the state of things going on? Because you're you got your finger on the pulse. As far as this year, I mean, it's definitely like. Looking to be like one of the best years of poor horror, you know. Yeah. And then uh, you, you talk about the the eighties and stuff. I mean, that all has its place in time, and uh, you know, with all the remakes and things and this and that. Like, I know you guys have uh, said this before, but you know, I think it's good for uh, movies to be remade because it brings attention to the originals. You know, you know, even if it sucks, it still you know brings attention to you know. Passion. Yeah, exactly, dude. One of my friends who's not into horror. We were, uh, he was, he called me up, he goes, holy shit, Evil Dead's already on Blu-ray, it just came out last weekend. I'm like, dude, that's, that's from 30 years ago. <laughs> great, great movie, by the way. The remake, I love that, man, it was awesome. Yes, awesome. Just brutal. It is, I saw it three times now, I got the Blu-ray, so I saw it twice in theater. No, I saw it four times, because I saw it as soon as I bought it, and then I saw it again with my girlfriend. I gotta tell you guys, Jason thinks that I'm wrong about this, he said, oh, no matter how many times you watch it, it ain't getting no better. It gets, I love it still. I that uh, that movie is great. He can just, I don't even. He's never that picky. Yeah, could you imagine a guy who likes Halloween Five is putting down the Evil Dead remake? Jason, <laughs> 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 uh, you're in. I don't know. A guy who likes Nightmare on Elm Street Two enjoys it. <laughs> oh wow, we're going there. Ah, uh, I, I actually like Part Two myself. Yeah, what about that, Jamie? Go ahead, insult our guest. I just don't even see it. It is there is no that's not Freddy. None of that is Freddy. None of that is what Freddy does. Actually, it's very much Freddy. Not at all Freddy. Um, and it's like I don't know. There's so many things wrong with that. Oh, uh, you're just trying to be like everybody else. And what? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes, I I frequently uh, fall victim to that, as you know. Jamie's like, wait a minute, does everyone think it sucks? Okay, then I'm going to go into this thinking. When, right, just like when Alex is browbeating me, trying to get me to change my mind about a movie. And <laughs> <laughs> not doing it. Then this is standard conversation here. <laughs> uh, pretty much it. I can't accept anybody not saying the same thing I say. Exactly. We must lie. We must dig. We must find out why. <laughs> I cannot accept somebody not understanding my this point of view. Unacceptable. <laughs> I just always uh, 
Saw 30 Revenge is like uh, like another way that, you know, the next thing that he did, you know. Yeah. I know that he sticks in the dreams and stuff, but it, it was kind of cool to, uh, to see, you know, even back then, I mean, you know, the, the thing with the bird exploding, I mean, that was a little far-fetched. <laughs> yeah, it was stupid. <laughs> Yeah, well, what I just said in the show, I'm like, you know, he's doing nothing to these people in their dreams throughout the entire movie, but let the poor little birds fall asleep, and they're fucked. <laughs> yeah, and and it, just, it just, I don't know, it just didn't feel right to me, because you didn't get a lot of Freddy. What you got what? was a lot of Jesse being influenced by Freddy. I never felt that And way. you get some some shots of him here and there, but I just didn't feel his presence. What? Plus, like, there's that whole thing in the boiler room at the end when the sound design is nothing but whale noises. <laughs> that. <laughs> it's like, That's what is that supposed to mean? I don't even know, but, um, David... <laughs> what David, does it mean? <laughs> What does that even mean? Now, Robert Russler makes me happy, as you know, and Flu Gulicker makes me happy. Uh, apart from that, fooey on that. Fooey. Fooey. <laughs> hey, I gave it the highest the highest score of three of us on Devour, so don't hate on me. <laughs> I gave it a D plus. Oh, a D plus was the high. Are you guys insane? What? I'm so glad I don't listen to that show anymore. Oh. Burn. <laughs> oh snap! I just don't have time. I got a full time job. I work forty uh, hours a week. Yeah, I, I hear you, brother. Um, and like, it's hard. It's hard to find the time to watch some good horror. I mean, hey Dan, just just uh, I thought about you last night, man. And uh, I watched Scream Four. I'd only seen it one time before. Oh, Scream Four. What'd you think? What'd you think? What'd you think? And I dug it, man. I think uh, yeah. I think, Kirby, I think Kirby was badass. I think uh, Jill, I believe her name was the, uh, the uh, cousin, whatever of uh, Sydney. I, I thought she was. Uh, yeah, she's sexy, she was, man. She did a great, oh, yeah, beautiful. And uh, and it was it was a cool twist, you know, with the yeah. the modern. You know, I, I I love it. I think he's right. I I love that movie. Dude, I you have Scream Four is awesome. Oh my god, you have thirteen DVDs on top of your TV, and one of them is Suspiria. You must be a hardcore horror fan. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? that? Uh, uh, that's what happened when they went to her house and they're like, Suspiria. Oh, yeah, yeah, Kirby said. Who was the first person to play? Gunnar Hansen. Like, oh, yeah, my, oh, yeah. my seven year old cousin doesn't know that. We should get Kirby to host the game show next time we have a game show. Uh, you're, coming on, you're coming on, Mr. Bates, correct? Hell uh, yeah, man. I'll be there, Yeah, buddy. brother. We're going to fucking toss questions. All right. I, hey, I'm going to I'm gonna drop a Scream 4 question on your ass. Uh-oh. There's a little heads up. And, Who is uh, the killer in Friday the 13th? <laughs> Jason! 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 The first time I saw Scream, I wanted to smack her when she's screaming that answer. And I'm like, oh, you're a dumbass! Did you really? <laughs> did you catch up? Because I was so combobulated that... I wasn't even paying attention. I was just like, yo, this is sketchy. I couldn't even think. <laughs> no. Oh, that, that was a great show, by the way. The game, the uh, part. <laughs> Fuck you, Alex. Oh, yeah, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> <laughs> really? You liked it, Mike? Oh, yeah, man. It, it was a lot of fun, man. I know that uh, you guys put a lot of time into it, and uh, it was a lot of fun to uh, just uh, chill and try to answer the questions along with with you guys, you know, all the people that was involved and uh, Yeah, what was it like playing along? Like what was it like um like listening to it? Like were you rooting for anybody? Did you have any predictions on where this is going? I always tell it straight up. I was pulling for Jamie Jenkins, you know. Oh after the Jaws res- retrospect she uh she won me over with her knowledge and uh just uh wow, you know. So I I, I just Oh that's to, so to sweet. Yeah, you know I mean just uh, all of the details you knew about Jaws and things. That, that was so cool, you know, just to listen to. And- wowie, wowie. Yeah, Jamie lived it. So, okay, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> I think you just called me old. No, it's you you live your movies. Like you say how you draw jo- jo- yeah, Jaws on the chalkboard and shit like that. Keep your toes that in the sand and your hands at the sky and keep on smiling till the day you die. I threw, a, I threw a chalkboard shark just the other day. Wow. <laughs> Did you? And Dan, it's keep your feet in the water and yeah. your hands in the sky reaching for the stars. Yes, yes, sir. Swifty quoted that. And always keep your eyes out for the red blanket. 
the wet blanket. <laughs> now, who who noticed that after that show? I did when I watched it on Blu-ray for Fourth of July. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm happy to ruin another experience. Uh, it, it didn't take away. It, it was just it's just one of those things that makes it, you know the it's just the wabi sabi in it, and it wabi sabi means uh, finding the beauty in the flaws. Oh, perfect. That's why I guess now I know why you like this show. <laughs> I know, right? Hey, welcome home. <laughs> yeah, you're here, brother. I am, the, I am the beauty among the flaws. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. What me to this show is you guys are real. You know, you guys aren't on, on here yeah. uh, playing a part or anything like that. I mean, you guys are just yourselves, and uh, that comes across, like, so just uh, perfect, you know? Thanks. Yeah, we're too dumb to actually pretend to do anything. <laughs> we have no imagination to make up a character. Be like, no, oh, it's time. For... <laughs> <laughs> it's time for listener letters. <laughs> listener letters. It took it no better than listener letters. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Ah, cha cha. Now wait, you haven't heard every. See, I would like to reference some shows, but you're not all caught up yet, are you? Yeah, I'm. Uh, like I said, I just uh, got turned on at the show, like maybe you know a few months back when uh, right. the you know tough times and. Uh, but I've went back. And I've actually watched the uh, other. I've actually listened to the uh, Adam Green interview, the Jaws retrospective, yes! the uh, Alyssa Rose, the Bill Mosley, the Conjuring review, the uh, Psycho Legacy. Uh, yeah. The documentary. And by the way, I watched all the Psycho movies again after uh, checking that out. All right, and, please tell us what do you think. Oh uh, man, what about the Psycho Legacy? No. Oh, uh, sure, but the Psycho movies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I mean, no offense to the legacy. Tell us all about oh, it. About this? No. <laughs> You're so stupid. Norman Bates, I mean, you know, the average looking guy, you know, and uh, just knowing that someone could snap like that, that's uh, that's pretty fucking terrifying, man. You know, pardon the language there, but yeah. Yeah, we don't curse on this show, so just watch out. I normally never do, but, you know, it's all good. You guys are good influences on me. <laughs> oh, I hope <laughs> not after that porno show. No, uh, I don't know, dude. You heard the you heard the Irish show, right? You, didn't you hear the fanatic show that I did? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what you... Uh, yeah, then you, you know everything you need to know. <laughs> oh God, don't advertise uh, that. If anyone hasn't heard that, you need to check that out. That's if you want to know about Jamie Jenkins. There you go. That was uh, wow. That was great. <laughs> Uh, was Jamie drinking Irish coffee that night? <laughs> I said Iris, not Irish. Iris. Is... Oh, Iris. <laughs> Irish. I was like, what the fuck is Irish horror? What does that mean? <laughs> that was the debut show of that, right? Is there yeah, a no. leprechaun uh, retrospective coming up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Irish horror. Yeah, Iris did a really good job, you know. <laughs> Irish Halloween masks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talk Silver about... Shamrock. Talk... I watched uh, the Halloween 3 after listening to the Tom Atkins interview. Oh, isn't and, it better, uh, dude? Oh, man, it was awesome. And uh, another show that I liked that you guys did was Halloween vs. Halloween. Oh, yeah. 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 Crazy, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I hope I made all my points there. Uh, I think I flustered Mike a little bit. He was like, but dude, you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Zombie wanted to make two movies. I'm like, well, he didn't, bitch. Yeah, he didn't. It would have been great if he did, but that's what he made. I wanted to be a millionaire today. I told Alex the other day, uh, what was this, yesterday, man? I was like, yeah, I actually uh, just got an urge to uh, to put on Halloween, uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween. And Alex just goes, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to that soundtrack in my car today. <laughs> You're kidding. Notice, <laughs> no, notice I didn't post that one on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, right? I'm kidding. Actually, it's a phenomenal soundtrack. The soundtrack? It's got some, it's it's got some great stuff, including my favorite song of all time, what? Uh, which is Don't Fear the Reaper. Yeah, it's a great song. We should play that in a commercial oh, break. soundtrack. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah. Um yeah, dude, like when when we did um when we did that whole thing in October, man, that was crazy. And I'll tell you what, like interviewing Tom Atkins, dude, that was probably my one of my favorite moments of I agree. ever doing this. That was yep. I still remember sitting there, man, and we we're talking about football and he told Mike, he's like, Tough shit, Mike. Yeah, when he said he, yeah, he, he liked 
everything though man like just yeah dude he's fucking he he surpassed all my expectations dude i was like this guy is fucking awesome and forget mm-hmm. about being nervous dude it's the opposite it's just like we're talking right now it's like wow man these people are fucking into the same shit that we are except the only difference is they're killing it <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh i had to like grab me a few beers for that one since it was like you know you guys had it, uh, it's middle time, you know? It's like, hell yeah, you know? <laughs> Well, and the yeah. interviews are always fun, man. But, yeah, like, just the whole package, man. Like, by the time Alex puts in what he needs to put in, takes in what he needs to take out, it's uh, it's kind of magical. I told him before I feel a little, a little fucking uh, guilty sometimes because I'm not more involved. But, I mean, what can you do, you know, from the creative process till we actually get down doing shit? Like, I know <clears throat> it's just hard sometimes because, like, we'll just be talking and that's where an idea comes from. Boom. And that's why, like, I've been calling Jamie more and trying to fucking get her involved because it's like, you know, it just happens so quickly sometimes. Where it's like, oh, shit, yeah, yeah, I just thought of this the other day. Uh, let's do this and, and these movies. And, you know, before you know it, fucking there's a segment and it's fucking half hour, 45 minutes, whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's how we do it, though. Yeah, everything's pretty spontaneous. It, I know it sounds contrived and everything, but it's really, really not. Uh, so sad, man. Probably to our. Yeah, Jamie. Jamie hates it, really. <laughs> right, Jamie. You're like, <laughs> what do I the, hate? What are we gonna do next? Do we have any idea what we're doing here? Uh, I don't oh, know. yeah. Well, I just like to be informed. <laughs> you know, um... <laughs> Jamie. I swear, we're almost all on the same level here with that. <laughs> None of us know what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Because she's so used to, like, real shows where people have, like, set <laughs> formats and set things to do. And it's like, I don't know. Uh, what's hot? What's hot this week? I don't know. Nothing? Okay, let's do a game show. <laughs> <You know? laughs> let's like, do an award show. Yeah, exactly. It's like, eff it. Let's give an award for the best tits. Uh, that's coming. No pun intended. Oh, uh, stop. <laughs> So, yeah, thanks, bro. Thanks for the, the kind words, man, and we really appreciate yeah. it. You know, we always gave it our best every time, and we're glad that that uh, it translates and somebody out there appreciates it. Thank you. Yeah, man, thank you guys so much for having me in the dungeon, man. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. We'd love to have you back, man. Yeah, man, uh, you guys want me to uh, come on the game show, you know, just uh, just uh, yell at me. I'm oh, you're coming, motherfucker. You can't get out of it now. <laughs> Just like Jamie's chain down, dude. Yo, you ain't going anywhere, son. You got a longer chain, but you got a chain. <laughs> cool. And the only reason it's longer is because, you know, the bong room back there, you know, we gave you the key, so <laughs> you have to have... Well, these- mine has to be yeah. short because if, I try- cause if it's long enough, I'll try to stand up and I'm not allowed to do that. So. No. <laughs> you know, your knees. Hey, okay. Mr... Bates. I just always wanted to say that. Um, what do you Michael want... Anthony Bates? That's so crazy. <laughs> what do you prefer the show on? Uh, alcohol, weed, or uh, or lack of sleep? Um. Well, I would think anesthesia all... would be anyone's <laughs> best answer. I've, uh, all uh, all three uh, I've experienced listening to the show, but um, I'm gonna have to go with uh, alcohol. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. Booze of it. If, if, it, if it would have been, if I would be like, if I would, if I was still in my twenties, it would be uh, definitely, you know, pot. <laughs> yeah, where are yeah. you now? How old are you at this point? Oh man, I'm thirty-six. Now, Alex, what, uh, what do you, what do you like to rock out to? Your, your booze, right? For, for doing the show, not listening to it, because oh. we don't listen to our show. No, yeah. actually, I've had to listen to a few for um, best of stuff, but yeah. Uh, I um I honestly we me and my girl were talking about this today actually. We really hate weed and it's because not I don't care it's nothing to do with the effect or how you feel. I I cannot take that smell. I know that you guys probably take those bags you get <laughs> and you're like Ugh. But you know what man? It is the worst. It smells like a, a skunk dropped dead, and <laughs> it's the worst smell I've ever smelled in my life. So it's always just going to be default. It's going to be beer. I mean, I don't have that many options unless I turn to drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Uh, I don't partake very often, but um, 
I've, uh, I used to be an independent pro wrestler for like eight and a half years. <clears throat> so my back is very messed up. Oh, painkillers. Yeah. I, I cannot take painkillers at all. They made me sick. Right. But uh, smoking a little pot, you know, it make, relaxes my muscles and my back. It eases the pain. So. I was a pro wrestler too, you know. For real, for real? Yeah, I'll, sh- I'll send you some videos. No way, man. Uh, I think anybody could find them. Don't fall for that. <laughs> By wrestling, he mean in videos, he means movies with Stephen Jeffries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was going to ask what this what the secret handshake was, but you know. Alex is going to be the star of See No Evil Two, directed by the <laughs> Sisters. Yes, Soska Sisters. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up now and see if you can actually find my videos. Oh Jesus Christ! Why? Why? Why must? It's here! Holy shit! Why will we be subjected to this? All right, if anybody wants to see me wrestle, <laughs> I shouldn't give this out, should I? Yeah, do it, do it. <laughs> How many times can I embarrass myself in a year? So many. Keep going. We're going to find out. Let's go. <laughs> I love fucking you guys. I love fucking I love fucking you, you too. I love fucking you guys. Yo. I love fucking you guys. Yo. Tears and vomit wrestling. Oh, no. Because <laughs> that was the name of my band, my rock band. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, see, I thought you were describing my prom night. <laughs> What was the name of your band, Alex? Tears and Vomit. Vomit. Ah, ah, so you could type it in. It the, the channel is actually the channel is called uh, you, YouTube.com user slash tears <laughs> vomit tears n the letter n vomit wrestling n vomit. That's like a made up name. That's like that's like a band name from from Full House or something. Oh my god. Yeah, right. yeah, did you play yeah, alongside okay. Jesse and the Rippers? Oh. <laughs> it's so funny, Jamie, are you using vomit? Jamie, are you pulling my chain? You know where this is from, don't you? How did what? you guess that? <laughs> I I got that name from a Mary with Children episode. Did you really? Yes, he did. He did. Kelly and Bud said they're going to go see Tears and Vomit, and then oh. Al goes, "You could you could see that when your mother cooks." <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's where we got the name for the band, uh, Mary with Children. The episode was called uh, "Eating Out." <laughs> no way. I can't believe that. That's what this guy swears. It's what it's called, "Eating Out." You said he was in a band, man. What uh, instruments did you play? Or was he the vocalist? Or? Uh, unfortunately, vocals, guitar, <laughs> and I. When we did, we had drum problems, so I programmed the drums myself, and then some other guy would play bass, and another guy would play guitar as well. Cool, man. But, you yeah, know, no, just but, fun fact: uh, if you Google yo, vomit, one of the a... things you get is what is esophageal rupture. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not not vomit. If you if you Google tears and vomit. Oh wow, really? <laughs> Ophageal rupture, yeah, and that's not <laughs> good for your singing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like remember when Ashley Simpson was lip syncing and they found out that she had uh, acid reflux. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. That was yeah, the right, fourth right, excuse. Right. Acid motherfucking reflux, my ass biznatch. That was Saturday Night Live. Huh? Yeah, that's right. Two thousand four October. Actually, uh, t- I'm like Rain Man. Oh, gotta, gotta go to Walmart, three, three, 300 Oak Street. Gotta go. Have you seen my baseball? <laughs> Michael, just so you know, I posted the Tears and Vomit link to your uh, Facebook if you're really interested in my wrestling. All right, I'll, uh, I'll check that whenever I make it back back home away from the dungeon. He's gonna run to his computer and check that one out. He's like, how much of a loser is this guy? <laughs> oh, that's cool. Hey, my... my- my final wrestling match is actually on YouTube as well, man. Uh, yeah? I, I want to see. Oh, hey, hey, Mr. Bates, I got a question for you. Yep. What's up, have, uh, have you seen any really good movies lately? Oh, dude. I uh, had a good friend of mine. Uh, <laughs> place Beyond the Pun. Yeah, The Place Beyond the Pun. <laughs> You're hey, so man. It, it's, it's not a horror movie, but oh my goodness, man. It's like... You cannot put this movie into a category if you try. Oh, thank it's like so so deep and just so many different, you know, the scope and so many beautiful shots and the story is amazing. It's 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 uh, yeah. you know, it's like Dan told me, you know, it's like three different stories and you know he's like, promise me you'll watch this movie, you know, and I was like, how much you ever watch it? And I stayed up to like six o'clock that that next morning because I had some things oh, come damn. up. 
it was worth the, the watch, man. I mean, it was just wow, good movie. Yeah, when he watches Eerie Thirteen, I'll watch. I watched <laughs> Eerie Thirteen. Thirteen Eerie? Yeah, you didn't. Yeah, I did. I did. It was uh, they were like out on an island, and it was like winter time. All the all the fucking trees were bare, and Katie Isabel was there. Your girl Katie. You just knew that she was in it. Otherwise, everything's wrong so far. Dun, 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 dun. I was listening to uh, Goosebumps, fucking uh, watching the Goosebumps episodes, fucking listening to. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> They're on Netflix, and you know we got. Dun, um, dun, 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 dun. Yeah, real quick on Netflix. Also, check out Sons of Anarchy, man. They got the first. Oh my God, Alex! First four seasons, and I am ripping through, dude. I'm literally every minute at work that I'm not working that is a playing on my phone. <laughs> I'm like, or he's sending it to people. Like, <laughs> oh, stop! Just a picture. Now you send me the picture. <laughs> Alex, what a great show to get into, though, man. I'm so Silly proud fucker. of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding you. Uh, it's a great show, man. That show is amazing. If you don't, if anyone doesn't believe that. Go to Netflix, click it, just watch the first episode, and I guarantee you, you will not stop. And it gets a lot better, too. Yeah, th- dude, I'm in, like, ten right now. <laughs> and I just started, dude. like, a week ago. Oh, um, my God, you're going to love it. It's, it's I'm going to it, guys. I have to check that out, man. I've never watched it myself. Oh, dude, you have to. You have to. It's a must-see. It's, it's, it's beautiful. Do you have Netflix? Oh. Yeah, man. Oh, dude. Please check it out. <laughs> yeah, so dude, thank you so much for coming on, man. I can't wait thank to have you, you on again. Um, Alex, Dan, Jamie, thank you guys for having me on, man. It's been, uh, it's been a pleasure, you know. And I'd like to give a shout out real quick to my boys, Johnny Bird and Jamie Hamilton, aka Fresh. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, baby. Shout outs on the crew. But you guys are just, uh, thank you guys so much, man. I can't say it enough times. Doing a great thing. Same here, dude. And thanks for posting our shows on Harbit, even though we're not there anymore. Yeah, brother. <laughs> You're the man. <laughs> well, we, we appreciate the shit out you. Yeah, dude. I appreciate you guys, man, more than you ever know. All right, brother. Yeah, oh, stay up, man. It was so nice to meet you, too. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you too, sweet lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, tongue tied there. All right, brother. See you later, man, with the last name. See you at the game show, man. <laughs> yep. Yes, <Will> yes, <laughs> we will see you on the flip side. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Later, man. Ah. Bye, honey. Get ready for gore galore. There used to be this camp about 60 miles from here. Camp Arawak. All these kids started getting killed. Well, it ended up that the killer was the shy 14-year-old girl that everybody picked on. Except she wasn't... Maybe. You're supposed to be in the cabin. Let's go. Wait, what, what happened to the killer? Whatever happened to the good kids in the world? Oh, <laughs> don't talk like that, Uncle John. There's lots of good kids. We just have to weed out the bad. Okay. Remember, ladies, nice girls don't have to show it off. <laughs> Where's Phoebe? I had to send her home. I found her doing things with the boys last night that she had no business doing. I know the rest of you are nice young ladies and you won't get into any trouble. Let this be a lesson to you. Say no to drugs. Camp Rolling Hills is the best. Oh! like being the wicked witch of the west hey but i know what happens when things get out of control you're gonna tell good night campers sleep away camp two sign up and become a dismember warehouse ship date november 16th
Yo, fuck the past, make love to the present. These words of wisdom coming from a Cape Cod resident. Wow. Alright. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? Asshole. All right, guys, we're back. It's the crew, and we are here with the man of the hour, Eric Morse, a.k.a. William Patterson, writer of the Friday the 13th novels. What's up, brother? Goran scares, everybody! <laughs> yeah, yeah, the signature hello. Oh, yeah. Got, can't, can't do without the signature hello. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, dude. So, yeah, thanks for coming back, man. And I want to ask you really quick, because me and Jamie talked about this, because I, I mispronounced your name one time. And I just want to know, how do you come up with Patterson as opposed to Patterson? Well, you know, that's that's my family name. And the thing, <laughs> thing is that that it's, um, it's from the Scottish Patterson. Wait a minute. What do you mean it's your family name? Like your aunt or uncle is called that? Yeah. What? <laughs> like, what do you mean? I don't understand. It's your family name. Isn't it Morse your family name? No. It's Patterson. the other way around. Yeah, the other oh, way around. Oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. I've been calling you Eric for like seven years. I'm sorry. Hey, that's fine. <laughs> a lot of people call me Eric. Who cares? Yeah, <laughs> well, well, I always did wonder that. It's a pen name, right? Why do you have two names? Oh, because uh, when I wrote the uh, Friday the 13th novels, uh, the thing was that um, I was also working on The Traveler, and I kind of figured that if the books failed, I didn't want to use my real name so that it would affect my other novel. (laughs) (laughs) Dude, that's awesome. That's perfect. Yeah, That's you want you want you want shit. you want to hear how I how I came up with uh, Eric Morris? <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> Alrighty, Eric comes from uh, Gaston Lennox's uh, character Eric Dessler from Phantom of the Opera, uh-huh. and the Morris comes from a uh, fictional detective that I liked, Inspector Morris. Mm-hmm. So now you have effectively broken down the Morse code. <laughs> oh, thank you. Good night. Eric's doing damage control over here. If the books fail, I don't want it to affect my new project. Pretty much. Because, because the books came at, at like the last minute and I was pressured into doing the books. Right. So you weren't going to do the William Pat- uh, uh, Eric Morris thing until your mom said you do realize you have to write all four in a year, right? Uh, no, the thing was that my friend uh, uh, Charisma Jones pushed me into uh, you know doing the contract with uh, Berkeley Books. Wait, is that somebody's real name? Yeah. That's L. That Charisma Jones. Yeah, Charisma Charisma Jones, and believe it or not, she looked like Cinderella Liberty. What do you mean? Who? who? Black exploitation. Oh, sorry, I'm not up on my on my black exploitation. Yeah, so Eric, you're here to promote that you have. Well, how do I say this? You have a movie coming out, and. You are writing the novel to that movie, which is loosely based on that movie. Pretty much. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, called Psychotic State, and it's the latest project uh, by my Wolfpack co-host, Derek Young. You know, he did uh, Family Property, uh, uh, Backwoods Massacre, and he did uh, Midnight Matinee Psycho. Now, these are all movies of his? Yeah. Where can we find those? Uh, on Amazon.com. Yeah? Yeah. Nice. Cool. Yeah. And uh, Midnight Matinee Psycho, I mean, it's it's in worldwide distribution right now. Okay. What's that one about, if you don't mind? Yeah. Just give it a brief synopsis. Because I've seen it on Facebook before, mentioned... Yes, I know. I want to check it out in, in, you know, in anticipation of psychotic state. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, every everybody's gonna wanna wanna see the American horror horror film, as I like to call it. Wait, what do you mean? You know, ra- rather than the horror film with the American in the name that's made in Canada. <laughs> oh, like Jason Takes Manhattan? <laughs> no. Vancouver. <laughs> Okay, yeah. so so we're so what you want a synopsis of what Midnight Matinee Psycho or no you're the new one oh Psychotic State oh yeah, yeah. Psychotic oh, yeah. State is quite the story uh, what it is about is it's about a young man a 26 year old man named uh, uh, David Coleman and the thing is that. He had come from an abusive family. His father uh, was molesting his sister, Josie, and was beating on him. So he gets uh, moved into a home, and this uh, family goes and um, adopts him. Well, the thing is that David is one of those type of people, you know, kind of like me, where... You know, for some reason, people just abuse him. So wait, is he someone like you? In in many ways, I mean, you know, like uh, in in school, you were abused. He's he oh abused on a weekly basis. I mean, you know, my peers were horrible to me. That's fucked up. So like bullying. Yeah, you don't have that vibe about you. I don't get it. I know. Uh, because the thing is that I got mad. I got mad and I turned on him. Well, it's usually justified. I mean, look at what people have been doing to you in your adult life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, in high school, it was horrible. I mean, hell, first first day in high school, uh, this guy goes and asks me what time it is. And I said, oh, I don't have a watch. So he goes and grabs me by the throat and slams me against the wall. <laughs> and he says, next what? time, yeah, next time, have a watch. What? <laughs> See, and that's what actually started the trend of wearing multiple swatches on each wrist. <laughs> because he never wanted to be without a watch again. I'm right. serious. And then, and then the thing is, while I was in high school... These guys ran over me with their car. What? They just cold blooded ran over you? What, dude? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They were assholes. They chased me and my um, my friend Phil after school. Chased us down this hill. Almost hit uh, some people waiting for a bus. Went right through some people's lawn and <laughs> tore it up. So they risked other people's lives just to get after you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then what ended up happening is my friend Phil, you know, in a, almost a typical movie thing, right. he trips, falls, so I took <laughs> him out of the way. The car's coming at me, so I had to jump in the air. I ended up rolling <laughs> off the hood of the car and ended up with uh, four broken ribs. <laughs> Good lord. That, that, what happened to the guys? Oh, they, they, got, they got called in the next day. And their parents... We're lawyers, and they got them off. Uh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, they, they, wait a minute. So, so you think, uh, okay, justice will be served. You got some broken fucking ribs, dude. And then these kids get off, and their parents driving to McDonald's after? Pretty much. And, oh. and they treated me like I was the asshole. <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, I mean, you you probably got blood on their car. Yeah. Well, well, the thing <laughs> is, yeah, right. That, that was pretty douchey. <laughs> I ended up turning on all these assholes, and I became the phantom at school. And 
<laughs> I would get revenge on these ones amazingly. <laughs> Okay, I'm, there you I'm, go. So you just you went devious with it and got your revenge in your own way. Do tell. Oh yes, like uh, like uh, putting liquid heat in, in the uh, you know. <laughs> Jock straps like in Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah. Yeah. Did you really do that? Yes, I did. Wow. So you melted their penises? And I cultivated um, fleas. And stuck them, stuck them in with the uh, cheerleaders. What? Yep. Although, well, the 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 revenge is one thing, but the cultivation of an insect in order to exact that revenge is bordering <laughs> on psychotic, isn't it? That's why he writes these psychotic like movies. Oh well, you're gonna love this one. <laughs> uh, the uh, principal. Who basically told me, oh, well, you need to get a thicker skin after I was hit by a car. <laughs> I got him royally. That would have been beneficial at the time. If your, thin, if your skin had been thicker, perhaps you wouldn't have broken his yeah, you, you wouldn't have been yeah. fucked up with that so, broken ribs. Yeah, he had a point. So what I did is I tacky glued his desk... I put tempera paint in his coffee maker, <laughs> and my friend uh, George, who is now Gia, uh, we went and we uh, stuck a urinal on the door oh. of his office. All right. How'd you do that? With a crowbar? Yep. Wow, dude. You are hardcore. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> And at our class reunion, I was I went and admitted I was the uh, phantom because it was like every day the principal was going, which one of you son of a bitch was doing this? I mean, what the fuck? Uh, we're not guys. Don't piss this guy off, please. I'm saying, right. yeah. I'm, I'm assuming the movie came first or or the idea for the film came first. Did you have input yeah. in that? Is it is it at all autobiographical? No, no, it's not mine. Uh, Derek was actually abused in school, too. Jesus. Where so, do you guys live? <laughs> yeah, where did you guys live? Columbine? He, 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 lives, he lives in Virginia. I live in California. Oh. But the thing is that anywhere. Derek was the one who came up with uh, the storyline. And then what he did is... You know, he handed me his script, which was very, uh, you know, the the scenes weren't very well developed. Okay. Because Derek likes to to do a lot of stuff on the set. Right. Okay, so he sort of he he writes it on the fly. Yeah, he he makes it like a skeleton, no pun intended, a skeleton script, and then he fleshes it out while he's filming. Improv. Yeah. Yeah, so he so he give, gave me this very loose script with entire scenes missing and stuff and that and told me about certain scenes and he goes, "Okay, write this write this novel." And I'm going, "Uh, how the hell am I supposed to do this? You know, there's no real characterization here. There's no anything here." And he goes, right. "Well, I trust you. I trust you, dude. You know, you can do it. Yeah, translation. I'm too lazy. You do it. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> I, I trust you. It is going to be a <laughs> novelization of Psychotic State, the story, but it is going to be totally different from the movie. As far as the ending and everything? I mean, you're just are you just basically no, the... taking it in your own direction, or are you following the basic outline of the movie, but... I'm following this basic outline, but what I'm adding is I'm adding subtext, I'm adding characterization, I'm changing characters, I'm expanding characters, I'm adding new characters in there, and it's going to be the same story, but basically told in a different way. <clears throat> and even some of the kills I've changed. Is Dr. Loomis going to die in your version, too? 
Oh, uh, God. Well, we do have a doctor. We have a Dr. Shillings, and, and he's a little bit of a dick. He thinks that we <laughs> sh- that you should call him Wayne. Does he have a bloody sock? No. <laughs> um, so, yes, sorry. James. I had, I had a question, but then I, I lost it. <laughs> In the middle of so? <laughs> it, I know, it, it's true. Uh, it'll come back to me. That Just keep going, and I'll think of it eventually. Okay, but anyways... <laughs> You know, honestly, I think that when this movie comes out and when the when the book comes out, I mean, you know, well, I mean, I'm sure on the book. Oh, my God. You know, the book is going to be intense. How many theaters are going to be released? I have no idea. All I know is that uh, Derek's uh, actually production is stopped because Derek's computer exploded. (laughs) So now he has to wait and get a new computer, and he has to re-edit the film. He was halfway through the editing process of the footage that he had shot, and it's all gone. No way. Really? Ah, uh, I know how that hurts. Dude. I, You know, I was actually the, the head editor on Camp Out Nightmare, and uh, <laughs> that is all lost, too. And um, I, I heard they're reshooting that whole thing. And you wrote, you rewrote that whole script, and they're rewriting that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm loving that. Yeah, what happened with that? Oh, well, let's let's tell everybody, just so everybody knows, uh, the guy who used to be on this show, uh, J- uh, Michael J. He wrote, he 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 made this whole thing, Camp on Nightmare. One through six when he was a kid. It ended in 98. And now he's remaking his own movies. And then Eric here, he came to Eric because he knew he was so good at the novels of Friday the 13th. And he said, can you help me uh, flesh out my script? So Eric spends a month, right? A month and a half. Yeah. And he, he beefs it up. He says, well, this kind of went nowhere. Let's do this. This did this. Let's do that. And then what is what happens with that? Yeah, I mean, I pretty much uh, rewrote two-thirds of the script. And Michael J., the thing was that he went to start shooting this damn thing. He had an aborted shoot, and he just decided that he was going to throw away the script and do, do all these scenes. And the thing was that they went against what I had written and it was just a mess and then Michael J started being an ass towards me publicly oh yeah well no the thing was that he did he uh, recorded an interview with me Uh in February and then he acted like a total dick he you know was supposed to be for artists in horror month right and he waited until the until the beginning of March. (laughs) And then what he did is he threw away the entire recorded interview because he wanted to interview Josh Gates. And he got pissed off because I got angry about it because I'd waited three weeks for him to, to put up this interview. Well, if it makes it feel any better... I don't think Mike has had a show out in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven yeah, weeks. Gates one was his last. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, Mike is not. Uh, he doesn't really put a lot of like that much uh, stock into how often his shows come out. Yeah, and and the thing is that what happens is this this dickhead that he's. Um, <laughs> getting to rewrite the script. John Rhodes? Yeah, he's he's sitting there and they're insulting me on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Sitting sitting there and Michael J's going, Oh well you're you're uh, fixing all those things that Eric Morris screwed up. And he's like, wow. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, um you know, and he's supposed to be a published author. You know what? I put up the uh, Camp Out Nightmare script that I worked on. You still have it? 
it's it's on my official website, uh, okay. author Eric Morris at Weebly dot com. Okay. People can go on there, they can download it, and they can look at the script. All the all the stuff that's in red is my work. Right. And you can see what kind of a script I worked on, how good the script was, and when Michael J. actually finally puts out his craptastic piece of shit, you're going to see <laughs> what that script, what that film could have been. I I had the... We should have, guys, insert word here. I, I, I read Mike's script. I had the what to do that. Pleasure? No. Time on your hands? <laughs> okay, I had a lot of time on my hands, and I read Mike's script. And I'm gonna, I'm, I'll be completely honest. This is nothing. I don't, I don't hate the guy. I, I really don't. Just because we couldn't like get along, doesn't mean I hate him. It was not really good. It was very uh, generic, and it's things that I could have thought of if you said I had to write a movie in about an hour. <laughs> I understand what Eric is saying. This is Mr. Skin from MrSkin.com with all the skinfo from the latest movies. Nude in theaters, it's the thriller Passion starring Numi Rapace and Rachel McAdams. The pair share a hot lesbian lip lock, plus Numi also bears breasts at the seven minute mark for director Brian De Palma. You'll De Palma yourself. This is the Mr. Skin Minute. Also in select theaters and on demand, Kristen Bell stars in The Lifeguard. After some hot side boob teases, Kristen gets banged over a sink at the 48 minute mark and bears her bell bottom. The Lifeguard will have you making your own zinc oxide. Nude on Blu-ray, it's Israeli model Bar Pally in Pain and Gain. An hour and six minutes in, you'll be pumping your own iron as The Rock does a rail off Bar's bare butt cheeks. Pain and Gain will make you strain and drain. Fast forwarding to the good parts. Hello, this is Jonathan Orr calling in on the Skeleton Crew, calling about the uh, the movie Your Next. I see that it's a it's a very fun movie. You know, a few scary things here and there. A nice little home invasion movie. I'm not gonna say that it was uh, the strangers. I'm not gonna say it's that. It sort of measure out to the Ethan Hawke Me and the Heater movie. You know, nice little uh, scary moments here and there. I like the uh, wolf mask. That's all I got to say on the your next. It's pretty good. On um, with the uh, other thing, I have to say, which is not much, Alex. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's uh, pronounced the Nia quickly. <laughs> Listen to the uh, episode 53 finally and just had to... Uh, Get you at that one. Jonathan Orr calling in for the Skeleton Crew. If you're not down with the Skeleton Crew, Dan got two words for you. Uh, you guys take care. Peace out. Call you next time. No, wait. Might call you next time if uh, I lose to the challenge that I gave out to Jamie. All right. Check you later. got your next this movie was made in 2011 it was released in august 2013 it's imdb rating is 7.1 out of 10 and it stars here we go sharni vin sun as aaron 
I love how he goes, here we go. <laughs> Na- name butchering time. <laughs> yep. Nicholas Tookie. Tookie Tookie. I don't know who he is. Felix? Tookie. Is that the... <laughs> See, do we, do we say... <laughs> do we say... I don't want to say who he is, because let's do a non-spoiler, so let's just say... Okay. The A.J. Bowen's brother. Mm-hmm. His girlfriend with the black hair, Wendy Glenn, is Z. A.J. Bowen is, uh, we know him. He was in Creep, Creep Show 3. Hatchet oh, 2. Boy, guy. Hatchet, Hatchet 2. 2. Uh, what else? Uh, oh. Oklahoma. Wasn't he in Among Friends? I think he might have been in Among Oh, I think he might be. Is he? Uh, I could actually click his name. Let's see what he's known for. House of the Devil. Oh, House of oh, the Devil. Oh, duh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how did we miss that? Everybody's probably screaming at us. Like, what the fuck? The Signal. Rites of Spring. I love his character in The Signal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I like his character <laughs> in Creepshow 3. I like this character, too. I, that was actually the only good segment of that movie. Um, and then you got uh, Joe Swanberg as the asshole brother. And that's about as far. Uh, Ty West as Tark. That's some random casting for you. Yeah, Ty West. That's weird. I want to know why it was put on hold for so fucking long. Yeah, so let's talk about that before we get into this. I, I personally don't know. I, I want to know, but... What does that usually mean? Isn't, wasn't there a, um, wasn't it released somehow, some way, and it got such great feedback that they decided to, yeah. to hold off on the DVD or Blu-ray and just go to theatrical? Yeah, they, well, they, yeah, that's what I heard. I mean, and they, they saved it, and they, they got a huge reaction from fans, so they said, okay, and they put a lot of marketing behind it, <laughs> obviously. Well, how did people see it, though? Uh, I know Comic Con um, played it, and even before that, though, I dude, I have no idea. This is something yeah. I read and I'm regurgitating. So, like film <laughs> festivals, do you think? Uh, I would assume so. Yeah, you know how that shit gets out there. But yeah. 2011, that was so long ago. I don't know. I, I really, I really have no idea. That's a long fucking time, though. Like a year is like okay, whatever. It's but. like what's it called? Cabin in the in the woods. Same thing. Yeah, exactly. I forget what happened with that too. Yeah, and the same thing. Well, that they waited for Chris Hemsworth to be famous from. Uh, um, <laughs> Was that it? Thor. For Thor. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, I don't think they waited for him to be famous. <laughs> well, yeah, right. Well, no, somebody said he's like. Blow now, up. Yeah, well, they said, well, now that he's hot, let's put this out. Like, I don't know how, why they were holding it or whatever. You know. I'm not... oh, yeah, I have no idea why they do that shit. Anyways, it, it didn't really have any uh, effect, like time-wise. Time, there was no timing in the movie. Like, it felt like yeah. an '80s slasher flick in, in any year. So. Yeah. Well, Jamie, do you think the hype? You know that there was a lot of talk about this movie, all the promotion. Do you think? Um, do you think it lives up to the the hype and that? Do you think that's judging it unfairly? Because just because some PR guy hyped it up doesn't mean the movie should do anything different than it did before. Most of the hype that I've seen that about it, well, at least before it was released, the the PR hype that I saw was mainly just talking about how scary it was. Right. And in that respect, I would have to say no. Yeah. It does not live up to the hype because I didn't think there was anything scary about this movie. Yeah, and the same, it's funny, the same, the last movie, I say the last, but I think Lords of Salem would come in between, the last super hyped movie was Cabin in the Woods, and they both were held off for like a year or two, so that's weird. When you guys watch the promos these days, like, you know how they, they're like meant to trick you these days, like, you know, they'll throw out some crazy reviews, but now... I, I don't read the review itself. I read who the fuck's saying it. Because if it's somebody legit or like, you know, like like us, like, us, like the skeleton crew said <laughs> this, it's like, because they'll pull the best ones. Okay, so I go to the movies. I went to a one o'clock showing on a Friday, and I think it was, what it, this was released like on Thursday or something, or maybe even Tuesday, I don't know. But I saw it Friday. I was the only person in the theater. <laughs> was it like the first showing? One o'clock usually is. Yeah, and I had a sa- a sandwich with me. I had a, I had a beer. It was really great, man. In the movies? Yeah. Do they sell beer? No, I had it in my jacket. Oh, sweet. <laughs> yeah. So I brought that in. It's cracked. You know, Did you bring a bottle? It. No, it was a can. Oh, you had the nerve to fucking crack the can. Then again, you were the only one in there. Yeah, but even if I wasn't, dude, I have this whole thing where I go. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> Every time. 
Dude, everybody's got their fucking their <laughs> shit that they do with before they prep to go in a movie. Dude, I'll fucking open my snack packages before I even go in. Yeah, like in the bathroom. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, like usually in the car. Oh, in the and car. I'll fucking, mm-hmm. I'll put them in my pocket. Well, thank you for so, that, Dan. Yeah, I always, I always encourage people to have quiet containers. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> well, I couldn't do it with the can though. I know. I actually considered it, and I said, "Can I walk really stiff?" with this in my jacket while I'm holding it to make it appear as if it's just a... Uh, never mind. Not and not get arrested. <laughs> so, yeah, let's start off with some non-spoilers. How about, like, an overview? Uh, overall, I enjoyed it. It was a it was a fun watch. I wasn't bored or anything, you know, by any means. I was not scared. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. it I mean, wasn't. it's just... It was it was interesting. There were some. I don't think that it was groundbreaking in any way. I don't think that it's really nothing we haven't seen before. I don't know. I think I'm an anomaly though because it turned. I just don't think that home invasion movies scare me. So um, because I what just about I have those masks though. It really does you know? Hmm? Those masks were pretty sketchy though, right? Um. Yeah, but that's been done. I it's mean, been I, so many times. You know, I know. Yeah, I know. I, there's that's really it. nothing it's fresh it. about that. Um, yeah. Honestly, the, the what I really liked about it was seeing Barbara Crampton, and that's uh, it's always nice to see Barbara Crampton. And I like A.J. Bowen, and other than that, uh, yeah, not really. I mean, it was, like I said, it was enjoyable to watch, but I'm not taking really anything away from it. Right. What do you think of the vibe of the, do you feel like it was an 80s slasher movie? Mm, no. No, I didn't get that do you at think, all. Do you think it lacked in characters, like you didn't care about the family? Oh, no. No, that was fine. Did it lack in humor? No. No. Yeah, what is it? It lacked in scary. <laughs> yeah, Dan, is that it? I mean, because we all seem to enjoy I don't know what you think, though, Dan, but me and Jamie seem to enjoy it. I enjoy it. I thought mm-hmm. it was good. Mm-hmm. But, um... It's good. It was good, but I don't know. What else is it supposed to be? Dude, I was thinking about it all day, man. It's it's kind of tough because this has nothing to do with the movie. I just think we're jaded, dude, especially after The Conjuring 2 where I thought we saw it all. Um, it was the same setup, like basically, you know, fucking, I guess, home invasion, but it was the same setup as like a slasher flick, you know, um, people killing other people, chasing them around, whatever. I, I, I liked the way it was shot. It was very... Um, I liked uh, a couple of the shots, so they were not too artsy, but it was, uh, you know, I, I give it credit where credit's due, but uh, it was just nothing amazing. Like, I don't know if, if, if we just see too many movies now or we've seen it all before so many times, but uh, I, I agree. I think it was good. <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> like, like that's, a, that's the whole thing, mean- though. It sucks. I don't know. I hope it's not because we see so many movies, but I really I don't. Think don't- so. I, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, I think. I don't think it's our fault. I think that. I think it's your fault. It's a. It might be my fault. <laughs> it's all your fault. I hope it's yeah. my fault. <laughs> I mean, I um. <laughs> no, I think it. It is a competent film. It didn't really do anything wrong. It just didn't really no. do anything new. It's just. It's not going to blow you away because you spend the entire time going, "Oh, huh, that reminds me of this," or "Oh, you know, that reminds me of that," and or at least right. I did. And okay, so maybe that's because I've seen a lot of movies, but even then, you can take something and be completely derivative. If you add something right. really fresh to it, you're going to get my attention. Uh, Fucking yeah. Ghost Shark did that. <laughs> I had to watch Ghost Shark for an upcoming Evil episodes, and hang on, this is the. How was it that? Is, it is such a Jaws ripoff to the point of. I mean, it, it goes beyond homage to the point of. Uh, practically being plagiarism wow. uh, because they, because they steal shit. so many lines directly from there i believe they're just trying to be giving it loving nods All but right. they just the last line of the last exchange the last exchange of the movie <laughs> is them swimming to shore and so, and she's like oh what day is today she's like uh, <laughs> oh, thir- uh uh tuesday and wow. then and i'm like no <laughs> uh, you do realize yeah. that Sharknado did the same thing. I know. I know. But this movie had a scene where two kids got cut in half and they were the the bottom parts of their bodies were still in, were on the ground and their legs were still kicking. And <laughs> the fucking shark glows in the dark. 
So you know what? It got my attention. Wow. Yeah. I so um, so after all of that, uh, my point is, is that you can be the same movie, but you do something something new, something fresh, something interesting, and you're going to get my attention. I feel like this movie, even though it was really well made, there was nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with the acting. There's nothing wrong with the sets. The photography is beautiful. Yeah. The kills are great. The, yeah, yeah, every, the, the atmosphere is perfect. There is nothing wrong, but it's good. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just good. I'd like to just point out something that I feel really set the tone of this movie. This happens to be my favorite aspect. <laughs> oh, man. Over and over, baby. Like, when this song just kept playing, man, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm digging the vibe. All my life I've been looking for a magic. I've been looking for a magic. From the sixties on the sixties in a jacket. I've been looking for a magic in my eyes. Over the eyes. To keep over all the magic in my eyes. In my eyes. Like, I feel like when you have, like, a really good song like that that just like plays throughout the th- like just kind of make it makes it thematic in a way i did love that I, the, mm. the placement of that song i mean yeah i when she first put it on i thought it was actually not that good of a song i thought it was awkward and weird but man they really knew what they were doing the more they kept playing it it really you got what they're doing with it and i'll have to admit i have played that on loop on several occasions since I saw the movie. Nice. Jamie, so have I. You sick <laughs> so I will admit that because you're absolutely right about that. And you're absolutely right. The first time when she first started playing it, I was I was like, oh, it was it really um it's like it's like a key was slurts was turned slightly too far or something was just off kilter. Yeah. And it was it was awkward. Right. But then, like, the more it kept playing, the more it kept playing. And then I found myself with it stuck in my head. And then I had to find <laughs> it. And then I had to play it. And then I had to play it and play it and play it and play it and play exactly. it. Exactly. So, I mean, it, it really just creeps in there. And that was beautiful. And I, I do love the fact that you only heard that song at one place. Yeah. And, right. you know, but you still got to hear it numerous times. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and um, so, yeah, that was a really cool thing. Okay, there is that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that, I'm telling you, that's tone, man. That's good stuff. I like that. Um, yeah, well, the, I, you know, I, I, well, like I said, there is nothing to complain about here. I really have no complaints. Nope. None. What's that, Dan? I was just going to say, we got to do a music show, like a score. and, <gasps> and oh. I, like, Immediately, I thought of, uh, what's her name, uh, in House of the Devil, too, that we mentioned, uh, the Fix song, and that, and it just going, like, there's, millions of examples but uh yeah and even going back to insidious jamie that song you love what's the name of that song oh tiptoe to the tulips yeah <laughs> dude i do that all the time like as soon as i see a movie as soon as i come home yep. after seeing dude blah, 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 check out the music find those music pieces fucking love that shit. dude this was hard to find man i i, I even recorded it on That's my the first phone. time i heard it since since uh, the movie yeah! Wow. I had to. I I couldn't find it. I had to have someone find it for me. Like, <laughs> like literally, this is my actual recording at the theater. Like I, when the credits hit at the end, I liked it so much. I go, oh shit, get the phone. What did you guys think about how the credits hit too, or the uh, you know, the the final scene? Oh well, it's spoilers. Um, so let's finish out the non-spoilers. Okay, so uh. Uh, is that it? Is that all we could really? Oh well, let's. I guess the premise is. Uh, should we give the premise? Jeez. Just. I, I mean. Know. Well, give the basic setup. All right. Well, it's a family reunion. These rich parents. They have a house out in the middle of nowhere, and they have like way too many kids, and all these kids have girlfriends, and uh, they all come to the house, and they all have a dinner. Their thirtieth anniversary. And uh, during dinner, their house gets attacked by people in squirrel and rabbit masks and shit like that. 
Fucking and, squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> and they shoot arrows at them and get in there and really butcher them up. And, um, and uh, then you've got to find out why these people are doing this and uh, how it all plays out. That's pretty much it. Yep. So there you go. So, it's not because they were home. No. <laughs> what do you mean? What, was that a line in the movie? That, no, that was from <laughs> The Strangers. From The Strangers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> which I don't like. <laughs> oh, I do, but yes, we'll talk. About so, well, how do you compare this to similar movies like The Purge or The Strangers? It's better. Yeah, yeah, it's way better <laughs> than The Purge. Way better, I'll say that. I wouldn't say way better. I really liked The Purge, but um, yeah, we never got to do our review, Jamie. Yeah. We'll, we'll do that one day. Yeah, it's um, I would say it's better. I definitely think it's better than Strangers because I didn't like that movie at all. So oh, that's not yeah. hard. What about you, Dan? The, oh, um, sorry. I will tell you there is the only home invasion film that I really think has is really really good and borders on scary because it's children like little children mm. is um the French film they il I can't I don't speak French <laughs> <laughs> they, <laughs> il est compétent <laughs> um so um anyway so if people like this kind of movie if you haven't seen that one then I recommend checking that out and Dan, you think there's better than those two, right? Um, I love The Strangers, man. I think this was way more entertaining. Strangers just bugged me the fuck out, dude. Like that to this day, that movie creeps me out. But, well, I will uh, tell you, The Strangers had one thing, one thing that I really liked, and that was the music. And they did exactly oh, the same yeah. thing. Same thing. As yeah. This movie yep. and the music, and the, especially one particular song, and. Um, that I really, really liked, and I really liked the music choices. Huh. Come on, so, though, that one scene in that? The Strangers, Jamie, come on, when the guy's fucking standing in the corner when she's smoking the cigarette, come on. Uh, like when he's in the, when she's in the kitchen and he's in yeah. the far left? Yeah. Right. Okay, I'll give it that well, one. I'll when when it you're that. standing at the counter like, and you think somebody's watching you, like that's that's really what's going on. Like That just bugs me out. But yeah, it, this... Um, <laughs> <laughs> this movie, like you said, uh, it wasn't as scary as The Strangers, but I think it was better because it was more entertaining. Like, there was a lot going on. Um, there was people going around killing people in masks. That was cool. And then you find out why they're doing it, like Alex just said. And I thought that um, that plot, the the main plot line, basically, as to why they're doing it, it was good. It was something that we really haven't seen before. It was a nice little twist. Um, a twist that I fucking saw coming around. Oh, God. <laughs> the, the cabin mainstream. And that's, that's one of my, I guess, my biggest problems with this movie. But then again, I get, I get really weird because I don't know if it's me or what, you know. Right. Is somebody, um, like, banging or tapping on a table or something? I hear, like, boom, boom, boom. No, I'm muted. No. Maybe your headphones are haunted. <laughs> All right. Well, okay. Did you guys hear about that Japanese guy that got arrested because he told this woman yeah. that her vagina was haunted and his penis was the only way to rid her of the <laughs> of the spirit? Really? <laughs> yes, the mother. What? It's his fault because she believed him. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. I'm gonna sue you or arrest you because I'm an idiot. I guess he wasn't arrested though. I guess he wasn't arrested for like four cigarettes. He was he was arrested because he took thirty five hundred bucks from her too. <laughs> so the I think the money was more of an issue than actually conning her into believing that her fucking pussy is haunted. Mm. Well, some pussies are scary, but I don't think they're haunted. <laughs> yeah, I've come across a couple hundred pussies in my yeah. life. So uh, yeah, I I think my only gripe is this. I'm right. <laughs> is the same as Dan's, which is that as soon as there was a touch of a hint mm -hmm. of where this was going, you knew exactly the plot. Other than that, I don't think it matters. I mean, whatever. That's mm -hmm. what it, it is. What it is. I, listen, I know the plot of every horror movie we like. The guy's going to go kill you. Right. Exactly. Yeah, you got to give them props for trying something at least a little different. Yeah, a little intricate. And the other thing is, yep. like Jamie said, it's not new or groundbreaking or refreshing or anything. But I think this is another problem that we tend to do with new movies compared to the 80s stuff like we sort of touched on before. Is that none of those did anything different or new or innovative or fresh. And we seem to have no problem with that. I think we just expect more out of people. And in all honesty, it should be the reverse because 
we're running out of ideas. It's almost like, well, what? How many different things can you do to kill someone? I know it seems like you could probably do a lot, but no, I, I do remember. I was saying the same thing during the Conjuring review. It's just yeah, like, that was, that's what I was about it. to say. Is is yeah. he said that? I, I well, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I like I said, I don't. I really, I'm with you guys though. I don't think it's us because we see so many movies. It's just. Um, how, how many different scenarios can you play out in movies and shit like that? And and to where, like, we recognize that this shit's good. Yep, that's solid, 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 solid. But now you have to be like a fucking 10. Like, you <laughs> have to be a 10, dude. You have to do something and knock it out of the fucking park to get anybody's attention. <laughs> well, I'm not I'm not mad at this movie because it didn't. I ain't mad okay. at it. You know, I'm not mad at it at all. I'm just saying that it didn't. But... You know, right. really what's important to me is to see a well-made film, and that's what this is. Yeah, it was. And yep. so that that is the most important thing, and it did that, and it did it very well. It just, you know, didn't knock me out of my seat. Well, actually, it did. I fell on the floor in the theater. <laughs> Alex, but you fall down a lot. <laughs> so, okay, let's give our pre-spoiler ratings. Uh, I give this a 3.75 out of 5. It's because... It's between like and really liked. I feel like I really liked it, but I think I I would buy a movie I really liked, and I don't think I'm going to buy this. So I'm just going to say 3.75 out of 5. So Who's next? Uh, <laughs> you're next. Nice. I don't know, man. Uh, is this out of 5? Um, yeah, you know, the r- Netflix. I'd say like 3.5, um, 3.5, just because like uh, – yeah, it, I really did have a good time with this, and, and, and it was it didn't blow me away. But like, I I probably will buy this. I I did like this movie. I think um, probably on rewatchability, it's gonna be because that's what I think of too. I'm such a fucking jaded motherfucker. I'm already thinking, well, how is this on rewatchability? Like a fucking Jesus Christ! I know that's what I'm saying. I'm I'm fucking. It's I'm like ass- it's like as soon as you meet a girl. Well, how good is she gonna give head? Well, not only that, how many times am I going to get it? All of that shit. Yeah. Exactly. No, I don't. I just, uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, 3.5, though, it was uh, it was definitely solid. I definitely recommend it to people. But um, yeah. it, you wouldn't want to go, like, running up to somebody. Like, dude, you got to fucking see your next because they're going to be disappointed. It's the scariest movie fucking out there. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> It's not. It's great, though. Go see it. Yeah, I loved it. I had a blast. Go see it. But uh, don't don't listen to any of the other hype. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Jamie? I'm right there. Um, I say yes, I would say go see it because I want to support good filmmaking. And mm. that's and this deserves it. So, yeah, I'll go see it. Um, do it. But I don't think I don't think you'll be scared. But, you know, maybe some people will. But I'm going to land this. Surprisingly, a little higher than you guys. Uh, I'm going to give it a four. Cool. Because, like I said, even though it didn't, you know, I didn't didn't give me whiplash. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it uh, it was really well done. So I appreciate that. I did enjoy my time. I'm glad I went to see it, and I would buy it when it comes out. So yeah. give it a four. Maybe even four. Yeah, I could see. You know, I could imagine also having people over and, and saying, yeah, let's watch your next. That's pretty cool. Oh, it, I also wouldn't mind, definitely, if someone came over and they'd never seen it. Yeah. But I had just watched it last week. Right. I would still say, yeah, come on, you know, let's watch yeah. it. Exactly. Yeah, it's one of those movies where it's like uh, – it's it's a nice little intro to people that don't really watch horror too. But it's brutal enough. The kills, you know, are fucking awesome off the hook. So it's a good little intro movie. All right, well, that's it. So that's it for the non-spoiler review. Now we're just going to touch into a little, you know, a little bit of details as far as plot. So if you have not seen this, skip this, go to the next segment, and come back when you've seen it. All right, so the opening scene I thought was funny because I always talk about this all the time where if a movie starts out with a sex scene, I already like it. <laughs> Hell yeah. now, what's the last one that that happened? It was a new movie, and that, and as soon as it started, it was that. That's why. Are I you thinking of the? Are you thinking of the video that I sent you? <laughs> that always starts <laughs> off with sex, except for uh, <laughs> Secret Shopper. <laughs> that just ends in sex. I know. I thought it would stir things up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Secret Shopper. Uh, yeah, so opening, yeah, it's the opening sex scene. It's funny too, and it's funny because I've been watching Sons of Anarchy a lot lately to catch up. Oh, 
it's so funny that in this movie, the 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 professor, whatever you want to call him, teacher from college, he's banging like a college chick, and she, the look on her face is like she's bored to death when the guy's plowing her, and it's like. I, I didn't get – I was trying to get the relationship here, and it, then it occurred to me, like, who cares what she thinks? I mean, as long as you're banging her, what's the difference if she's thrilled? You know, <laughs> she's obviously willing to do it. You're not raping her. That's good enough, man, for me. You don't have to smile or enjoy it. Uh, you are so lucky that you found someone who will have sex with you. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, I thought she was hot when he was banging her, but then when she got up and had that half shirt on and stuff, she kind of looked like like an anatomy project. Like she wasn't hot, like she had tits and they're there cuz women have those and it looked like it wasn't sexy tits. It was just anatomy tits. Do you know what I mean? By <laughs> well, I know I know this is I know exactly what you mean. I thought the same thing about her. I and it's not like I sit there and pick apart people physically I, but for some reason when she the first time we saw her just you know standing there hmm. I thought well she's very ordinary exactly you know I was like <laughs> typically typically in an, you know a, if it were a slasher film like a you know what we're used to and then people um, start out with sex they're going to be you know she's going to be like a penthouse model right you know, or oh, sure, okay, maybe not that hoard up, but you know, she, mm, <laughs> no problem with that. Uh, but um, but you know, she was just very ordinary, and it was it's not it wasn't a bad thing. It was just a noticeable thing, you know, or just something that I picked up on. You know, she's normal. <laughs> yeah, and the reason I, I mentioned Sons of Anarchy is because I just watched the episode where Sam Crow was running the porn studio. And then Darby had all the porn Fucking girls. Tom Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And and Darby had all the porn chicks become prostitutes. And as they come into the room, this guy, this like creepy guy, is banging her, and she's just looking at the side, completely bored. And then the cops burst in. So it was just funny that I watched two things in the same span of time that did that. But whatever. Two things where a woman was bored while while having sex. Yeah, I don't I don't see that often. So I, it just occurred to me. So. Here's the thing. What is... You don't see it that often. <laughs> well, I didn't say in my personal life. <laughs> that I do. I'm talking about like other people having that problem. So what do you guys think about this? Were you both confused or just wondering where we're going with this when... Okay, so they made it clear that that was a teacher banging his student that lived up the road. I think the mom or the dad said it because he left his wife for her. Now... Then A.J. Bowen is at the table, and then they talk about him being a teacher in, in college or something, and he's banging his student. And the guy goes, that's inappropriate. Mm -hmm. So did you guys think, like, well, what is this, a movie where these guys in these masks just kill every teacher who's banging his students, like there's some <laughs> kind of vendetta against them? It crossed my mind. <laughs> like, what was the correlation? What's the point? I don't know. Maybe if the police had been playing in the background, I would have gone that that route you know that would have just sent it home or if there'd been like a copy of lolita on a bookshelf <laughs> i didn't i honestly didn't lolita. even think about that <laughs> i didn't it didn't uh i didn't even think about it but how strange that two characters in one movie i was yeah dude when they said that i was wondering where that was gonna go and i thought that was gonna pay off and i didn't think about it till you just said it but yeah that went nowhere, nowhere. as far as i can recall they live in Pedo Village, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, you know, the kids, they're addicted to Vicodin. They're hanging out with the parents. All they do is fight with each other. And then uh, you get to the dinner scene. And, you know, another thing, another weird thing about the movie, man, I knew exactly what was going to happen. When this guy was looking out the window, you knew. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. For one, he was he was obviously an an extra character. I mean, he he was not one of the direct family members, so he was disposable. Right. You, know, you knew yeah. that, and chances are good when they're that disposable that they could be disposed of first. So it yeah. wasn't it just it was not at all a surprise that that he took it. And I was kind of let down that I knew that it was coming. Yeah. Right. You know, I I, I didn't want <laughs> I didn't want to know that. You know? No. I didn't want to to be prepared for it. 
Was that in the trailers or something? How do we all know that? Or is it just um, common well, sense? Well, well, it's common sense, I think. We had – there was a there was a long period of time, not in, you know, living our lives long, right. but in watching a movie <laughs> long. There was a long period of time where he was looking out the window and, and he's like, you know, <laughs> what? And then he's like, what the fuck? You know, and so, of course, you knew, oh, here comes it. And, <laughs> and how many people in your mind – you knew it was going to be some kind of projectile. And how many people just automatically filled that in with crossbow? I think I did. Right. You did because – and we were seeing a lot of that lately. I saw an arrow. Seriously, I really saw an arrow in his face before it happened. Yeah, you did. And I don't I – don't, I don't, you should have because that, that's the natural response. Um, I, you know, I, what if maybe – Somebody popped up directly in front of him in the window and like hit him with a shovel or something. Now that would have been unexpected, you know, because yeah. I would have been waiting for the arrow. Um, I just feel like if they, if choices, di- and I'm not saying that was a good. I, I do, please don't think that the shovel, <laughs> the shovel by the window is a real thing that I would do. But um, <laughs> I feel like if some of their choices had just been slightly different, right. then would've I would have had a different reaction to the film. Yeah. Yeah. Might have put it over. Yeah, you're right. Well, what do you guys think of the whole entire movie as a whole in terms of um, approach? For example, you got the heroin again, and I do not mean the cool drug. And you got killers, multiple ones, which the only reason it bothers me is because of the purge we just saw. But other than that, it's unique that... There are, are, well, not so unique. Well, how many killers would you say there were? Three? Yeah, yeah, that's that's unique enough, even though Wrong Turn's done it. But not too many people have done it. It's the not just Strangers one. had three. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, well, it's just not as often, as, I mean, <laughs> as, as common as one. You know, so that's cool. Texas Chainsaw. All right, you know what? I'm done with this point. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys think about the, uh, just... The, uh, the twist ending or whatever, like the whole plot of the movie, like why they were doing it. Um, are we going to reveal that now? Or Yeah, we can now. It's spoilers. All right. Well, it's <laughs> fucking basically the Menendez. I'm sorry, stuff. Alex. <laughs> whatever. I'm sorry. I'm over it. Yeah. I just roll with the punches, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like the, what's his name? <laughs> yeah, uh, Tebow, Tim Tebow. Yeah. Jesus Christ. The guy couldn't even, he couldn't make a cut. What did I say? What did I say? I've been saying this all along. Fucking what thing. happened to his career? Oh, he was on top of the world in 2011, <laughs> 2012. It's a joke. In 2013, the guy can't make a team. He came in here a joke, and he fucking left a joke too. What? What a! But how how amazing to have had that one year though. Whatever, dude. He probably picked up more from fucking Tom Brady in, in two months than his whole fucking career anyway. <laughs> so it's the best thing that ever happened to him. Peace. See you, T-Blow. <laughs> T-Blow me. Fucking <laughs> T-Blow me. Yeah, um, so where are you? Oh, the, the, the ending twist. Um, I, I feel like I've seen it before. I, I feel like it was like in some kind of, you know, TV series or some shit, some uh, soap opera you know, kill the family, get the money. I've oh yeah, it's age. It's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not. It's not so much a twist as just a slight yeah. turn. Right, right. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I, yeah, you're right. You're right. Absolutely. It's like thing. it's like a hey, look over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Hey, look over here. Well, even more importantly, what did you think at the the point where you should start scratching your head? Like when the 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 fox or whatever the fuck he was when he comes behind the dad the and cuts his, <laughs> the squirrel <laughs> when he cuts when he when he comes behind the dad and cuts his throat in front of the son and the son's like he's pushing he's like get away from me like he pushed him away like you're like why would you that's your dad dude no, that was a dead giveaway first of all well come that on. was it yeah <laughs> but the first one was when the chick was smashing the one dude's head in over and over and the other guy just stood there with his girlfriend and you're like dude you're a man help out right right and so what did you think at that point when the dad was killed in front of him did is this when you said he's in on it right i said okay yeah honestly i was like that's so obvious i hope that that's you know it turns out that that'll be it but then there's something else after that because if that's it then fuck come on 
I mean, and, and I thought they were being like, that's that's where I, my head gets too convoluted because then I'm thinking, well, is this movie really smart? And they're trying to throw us off right. with 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 you know what I mean by doing those shots and shit like that because it's like it's too obvious. And then when it turns out to be that, you're like, oh fuck, like that. Wow, that's all you got, bro. Like word, that was it. Personally, I think his demeanor from a dead giveaway. I mean, was a dead giveaway through the entire thing. From the beginning. I mean, from well, no, not from the very beginning. I mean, because nothing had happened yet. But as soon as things started happening, his demeanor throughout what was going on it was just off and bizarre. And Patrick brought up something interesting that I didn't think about when I was watching it, but I think he's exactly right. Is that Z was a smoker, and she smoked right up to the door when they first got there. Yet during that stressful situation, she didn't light up one time or even right. talk about it. You know, I mean, a smoker would lean, would, would grab for that in that situation. So at least once, I mean, I don't know. It just seemed bizarre to me because they made the point. Well, and, and they made the point to show her smoking. I don't know if that was. Oh, I know why. why? It's, it's, it's dead. Oh, absolutely. I know why. Because I dated a girl who smoked. And when they meet your parents, you're like, all right, hon, can you just like chew gum while you're here and we'll leave? And then you could like, don't tell her you smoke. Don't do it. Like you don't want your parents to know your girlfriend smokes. It's. I get, but I get what you're saying. So, right, but yeah, she was, true. she the mother was outside. They'd already met. Right. So she's right there, right in front of the mom. She's like, "Hi, how you doing?" And that's like, it's like, oh, okay. It's just like a certain, like the first impression. The mom meets you, and you're sitting there, you know, puffing on a butt, and it's like, well, you have no respect. Like she, what, what that, what I'm trying to say is, what she, when, what that was doing was saying she could care less what these parents think because they're going to be dead in an hour. Right. So right. there, there's no reason to to give a good first impression. So that was supposed to be a foreshadowing, like, but not real. I mean, now looking back on it, it is, but it's not really like a major turning point that she's no. But it's thing. it's it, looking back. That's a good. That's a very good point. I didn't think of that. Yeah, but. that's that's what that was. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, so the first what the f moment because Dan like hinted at leading into the double twist. So th- this is part of it. When people are running for for their cars and stuff like that, I was literally double over laughing my ass off when they sent like their daughter to run out of the house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the wire was across the door. I don't know yeah. why I found that so funny. <laughs> that was... I was like. <laughs> Another dead giveaway with the dude. Remember, he went to fucking go get help and didn't come back till the end. It's like, oh, oh, he disappeared. Fucking, you know, perfect timing. And oh, come on, man, dude, I didn't get that. All I said was, the one guy I really had any interest in seeing here was AJ Bowen. And why is this guy absent for the duration of this movie? <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. What the fuck? He wants the money, but he doesn't want to be involved in the dirty work. The little pussy. So. <laughs> yeah, and don't get me wrong. I mean, it really – he had a, a very good role and he really de- delivered well at the oh, end. Oh, yeah. He did. He yeah. Did. I, when we get to that later, I have I have it on tape actually, so I'll play it. Um, Talk about the heroine. Does no one else think that she was really fucking badass? I thought she was badass. Dude, fuck yeah, fucking – Home Alone 6, dude. This shit was <laughs> off the hook. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, man. She's a fucking, uh, what was she? She was like an Australian fucking survivalist. Yeah, as Rambo. As soon as I heard that, I was like, yeah, <laughs> shit's on. And like, and that's the thing. It, it's a kind of an easy out to be like, oh, by the way, she's a fucking, she's a Navy officer fucking spy person. And and like, <laughs> but but at the same time, dude, I love that shit. When they throw that in, I'm like, uh-oh, okay, it's it's going to go down then. Yeah. And here's the one thing that was odd, though. Like, she's sitting there saying she's, a, you know, she went to survivalist school and all that kind of whatever it is. Mm. But so apparently they don't teach you how to kill a human being besides smashing their heads in. <laughs> I mean, how many people were just going to get their heads bashed in by her? Well, one was blended. Now, be fair. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think blenders work like that. Um, I don't think you could put... <laughs> Oh, wait. Oh, no. She put upside down. Okay, yeah, I guess it... But they're usually more deep in... Eh, whatever. Yeah, I thought so. I know what you're saying. Let's not get too picky. Yeah. And usually they're, like, hard plastic. 
Right. Well, and the, the gore right. level on this, though, was non-existent pretty much. I mean, you got some blood, but it's not like – we didn't get to see her blend his head. Or lift right. it off and no. see a good chunk of brain. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, we didn't get that <laughs> stuff. So <laughs> it was too classy for that. <laughs> yeah. But this movie had plenty of what the F moments. The first one I thought was strange when they were all looking for the, you know, killers or whatever. The dad walks down the basement and he, for why would he pick up a, a, a jar of piss and come upstairs or a bottle of piss? Like what, what was he, what was that? <laughs> okay. Well, I want to know why he, um, at one point he has a weapon and then he, oh no, she, I'm sorry. At one point she has a weapon in, in the basement. Throws it down, and then goes and picks up another one. And it's like a, it's like a, um, like, like a limited use weapon in a video game. <laughs> <laughs> There's like one seat where she's kicking ass, and then she just throws it down. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> eh, she want to keep it interesting. <laughs> um, but it's like, oh, I've used that too many times. I gotta, I gotta get something else. I'm gonna go pry <laughs> this off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another what the F, like, kill, really. Like, what was with the camera going off? Like, that annoyed the shit out of me in the basement when the camera just kept flashing. Like, I literally was like, all right, my eyes, yeah. please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going to go to the CJ here. Yeah, and she just smashes his head in. As the killer, would you have been lured by that? I think that's a rather obvious trap. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, what the fuck? I mean, it's like, awesome. Yeah, let me go over there. She's running from me, so she's going to do something that flashes rhythmically. That's, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I'm not going over there. Only in survival school can you learn a kill like that. Yeah. That's all I'm going to say. But uh, another what the F, mo- funny moment, man, when the brother, when the asshole who who reminded me of the resilient mother effer from Evil Dead remake, he's walking around with an arrow through his back the whole movie. And he's still an asshole, even in, in the face of death. But uh, and he'll still pick fights with his brother because that that's really important in this uh, in this scenario. Right. <laughs> like a resilient motherfucker, <laughs> dude. He, what is, the guy just kept picking shit up off the table and stabbing him, then picking another one, stabbing him. It was like, just die already, Jesus Christ. I know, we made the same comparison to the evil dead guy. I think that's funny. Yeah, absolutely. That's like me, myself, and Irene when Jim Carrey's fucking riding by and he shoots the cow in the head and it's fucking, it's still alive and he just fucking starts beating it to death. I Sorry. guess the, the only other what the f moment was um, when the girl, the black hair Z or whatever her name is, she, they kill the uh, the mom. You know, just one of the other guys though that he hired. Kill the mom, and I guess she's laying in bed. I can't really remember. And they actually lay in bed with the mom, and then the girlfriend wants to to bang this dude, who's the son of this dead mother, and she goes, you know, uh, bang me in front of your next to your dead mom. Hot. Hot. <laughs> and the guy acts like, oh, this is so inappropriate. Meanwhile, he is in the in the process of killing his entire family, but this is too much for him. Yeah. If He's probably only concerned about getting caught because if someone were to walk in on that, you're not living that shit down. I mean, your name's getting taken out of the will. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, so pretty much. I don't know, maybe if they'd been completely alone, he he would have done it. I don't know. Now I don't know. It's probably not. But yeah, it was a little bit twisted. Yeah, yeah that was weird. So Ooh. that's that's pretty much it. So I guess we'll wrap it up with uh, so AJ Bowen um, after she kills that black haired girl and the guy who we just talked about, who is the main guy of all this. AJ Bowen calls up the dude. Oh, well, first of all, wait a second. Who didn't think A.J. Bowen was going to be the fucking killer in this movie, first of all? <laughs> Did anybody? No, no, I knew. I mean, it just it was just sort of there, you know? I, I thought before... I don't even know how it. I figured it out. It just was knowledge, you know? <laughs> That's what I mean, though. Yeah, yeah. Like, you watch Horrible Way to Die, you see what kind of actor he is, and I'm like, he's the fucking bad guy. Like, I don't care if they make it... Out to be the bad guy in the beginning or the end, but at some point, dude, shit's gonna get weird with fucking AJ Bowen. Yeah, it was it was a glaring omission that the guy's absent from the movie, so you knew something was going down. Well, plus he's AJ Bowen. That's what I'm saying, though. Th- those two things, oh fucking, yeah, boom, it, it, 
hit it out of the park. Fucking definitely the killer. But uh, yeah, man, I think he killed it. He did a great job. And uh, oh, the explanation. I'm gonna play it right now. I got it on tape. Here you go. Here's the explanation when he walks in and he, he describes why he did this and all that. Here's that. Where's Felix? A stuck a blender in his head and killed him. Oh. Okay. I can't believe you were in on this. <sighs> Come on, babe. You do know how broke we are, right? You would have killed me. No. That was never supposed to happen. But even if you hadn't meant to kill me, you must have known I could have died. No. You were supposed to be the witness. A person with a clean record that could attest that our family and neighbors had been murdered by unknown lunatics. It was, in fact, a very important part of my plan that you be unharmed. We needed someone with no motive to see what had happened here. Someone other than Z, obviously. Where is Z? Killed her too. Oh. Totally understand. Listen, I'm sorry things got so out of control. But, um, how are we supposed to know that you were really good at killing people? Which is actually sort of weird, by the way. Had you reacted um, normally? My parents and siblings would have been killed. You'd have been untouched. And we'd be rich. We'd be on our way to, like, a vacation in Paris. Maybe an engagement? Okay. Okay. There is a silver lining here, by the way. I'm now the sole inheritor of my family's estate. We're talking millions, babe. You. Me. Us. Look, regardless of our current situation or whatever we're going through right now, it would be insane to throw that away. I mean, look at all that would be wasted. I understand it might take a while to make this up to you. But in the meantime, let's think about this logically. I know you've got your student loans. How would $500,000 go towards fixing that problem? You could quit your bartending job, just study full time. You know you hate that job. You could have $500,000 within a month. Or I go to jail and you get nothing. I said AJ Bowen's the fucking shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Jamie, what'd you think? Was it a good double twist, or was do you just since we saw it coming again? I mean, it was just it was obvious, and I, I don't really see how anyone could be surprised by any of it. But it's still interesting, right. you know. It's still an interesting story, even if you see it, even if you see it coming. It's well made. It's well played, and it was an enjoyable watch. Yep. You know, but it just it just is not surprising. Do you think we put too much into the twist ending? Like, why does everything have to have a twist? Like, why can't it just unfold as the story that that it is? Do you know what I mean? Like, and, and I'm talking to myself because I find myself having a problem when it doesn't fucking surprise me. Like, when it does unfold the way I think it is, and they're not trying to trick us, but they well they are in this sense. But 
I mean, come on. Did they think that they're really going to that, that they're going to fucking fool any real horror fans here? I mean, see what I'm saying? Like, especially AJ Bowen being the bad guy. Every, all horror fans are going to know this guy. So it's like, OK, boom, right there. That they're, they're smart right off the bat. So I don't think they 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 thought for a second they were fooling us. I don't see how they could have. But, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they don't care. I don't. It doesn't. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me if something doesn't have a twist and Mm -hmm. and just it just doesn't have. I mean, it or it has one, but it's just. I would rather it not have one at all. See, that's what I was going to ask. That you can see coming from six miles away. (laughs) Okay. Right. Right. Um, right. I don't. I don't like feeling that I. Okay. Well, let me break this down. When I go to a movie or watch a movie in any capacity. I like to allow myself to go along with the movie the way the director intended me to. Right. I want to see things the way the director wants me to see things and I only want to be I only want those things to be revealed to me when they choose them to be. And so if I end up figuring out something and I don't try, I never try because I don't want to. Now if I don't if I end up accidentally figuring out something before they tell me, then that's disappointing. Because if I'm not even trying and it just sort of fell in my lap, but mm. I know that you that your real goal is to surprise me, then that's a fail. Right. <laughs> you know? And so right. I don't want it to be a fail. Uh, so I and it just you know so I don't like it. I don't. I would rather be completely out in the open, you know, because right. otherwise then I feel like I didn't have that good of an experience. I guess, you know, if. I didn't have the experience yeah. that the director was hoping that I would. Right, right. No, I got you. I got you. And I think with twists, too, those are getting harder because it's basically like, well, who's behind it and why? And and how does that fit in with the story and shit like that? Like, you look at the fucking twist in Usual Suspects, you know, when his fucking when his limp goes away, it's like, boom, that's a fucking twist ending right there. But Sleepaway with, with, Camp. Sleepaway yeah. Camp. Jesus Christ. <laughs> that was a fucking surprise ending. <laughs> that's probably the biggest oh, horror twist ever I did a top 10 many years ago and that was number one yeah, was it? it has to be Psycho being number two yeah right? Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, you're right. But with movies like this, though, it's so tough because um, the the story, they have to, you know, put on this front or whatever. Within the story, they have to put on a front and they have to, you know, go along with it. But it's tough between, OK, are they just telling the story of these people bullshitting or are they trying to trick us as the audience as well? And I think it's a little bit of both. But like I said, I think it was more telling the story than it was trying to trick us, because if they were trying to trick us, motherfucker, it didn't work. Think about this, Jamie. You say that you want it to just to be out in the open if unless, if you're going to make it obvious like this. Here's the thing. I don't think you really want that. And here's why. <laughs> here's why. I love it when a man tells me what I really want. <laughs> and here's why. <laughs> Wait, what, watch when the man is right this time, right? <laughs> Imagine the movie started and they all get to the door and um, they all walk in. The two brothers give each other a look. He gives him a nod to come here. They head over upstairs in their old bedroom, and he goes, All right, so I got my friends coming. They're going to kill mom and dad first, so stay away from the windows. They know, we know, blah, blah, And, you know, it's play cool, and let's go on the stairs, and everything will come out. I want you to stay away. Try to get your girlfriend out of here because we don't want her to die, and we'll split the money like we said. I got to give some to my boys. I gave them this percentage, and we all made the deal. We're good. And then the movie went on. Mm-hmm. Now, that movie would suck. It would suck. So you have to, you can't. You, something like this just cannot be, although it's obvious and not an original well, idea. So that, well, then that, that doesn't change my point, though. Just don't make it obvious, you know. Make right. it, do a good twist. If you're, going, if you're going to do a good twist, then do a good twist. It ain't like it's truly obvious. When the when the brother was grossed out by the dad landing on him and stuff, that is when you're supposed to think. You're supposed to say, "Well, that was weird," and then things are going to start coming together. And, and yeah, but I already told you we thought that beforehand. As soon as anything started happening, his demeanor was obvious to me. Yeah, but you know what? Even when he he literally spelled out their plan and said, "Um." 
They're, they're, it's probably cell phone blockers. You can get those for thirty dollars. Like, dude, you're giving us your plot here of how you're killing us. You know, like even if you look back on it and you see it that way, it's like it's still not cemented. Just because you thought that, how many people do you think really thought, "Hey, this guy's"? You did. Dan did. Yeah, but I just thought he was an awkward, socially awkward guy. <laughs> Like, why? it doesn't mean I knew he was plotting to kill these people. I didn't know that. Until the dad landed on him. And I thought it was also strange when um, he didn't help the chick bash the dude's head in. I just thought he was a pussy. You know? Like, you right. just... I just didn't know. I don't think... I don't think it's as obvious as we're thinking. I think that once that happened, we put it together. Well... It wasn't far from when that happened, though. That they, that they actually said it out loud. Then you and I had a different experience. My my brain went elsewhere because to me that there was nothing. That's the same problem that I had with the strangers. I was writing it, except for the strangers, I didn't like at all. This is when I really liked. Uh. But I mean, I had the same. I was basically writing it along while. I mean, I it was so obvious. How? <laughs> yeah. It just. I don't know. I think until that happened, it wasn't obvious. Okay, to you. But I'm telling you when I when I I told you when I thought it was obvious. And it was before that. But I I mean it was definitely before they would have intended us to think so. You think? Because well, yeah, because if they if they'd planned for us to figure it out when we figured it out, then that's just poor planning. Because why would you want someone to figure it out that early on? Well, how about this? They threw you off with, like I said, maybe that was to throw us off. A.J. Bowen banging his, his student, another guy banging his student. Both houses are attacked by the same people, obviously. So maybe you're thinking that, you know? So it's not um, obvious. And then another one is, um, uh, like, <laughs> I guess, oh, maybe even just those people getting killed down the, down the street. Maybe just figured they're just... Killing people in, in out of the way outskirts of uh... you know what? I, can I say something though about um, just revealing in general in movies and stuff like that? Like in this, yeah, you can. Like I'm always looking at everybody. Like who the fuck is it? Who the fuck's behind it? You know what I mean? I just am. So I'm looking at everything from both sides. Like for, from the performance that it is, and then could this person be fucking in on it? The killer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I don't mind it unless it does stupid shit like. Um, Put, puts in like edited cuts and shit like that like it'll cut back to a scene and then show you know the a di the scene play out kind of a different way from their perspective and shit like that like almost like trying to convince you to they're play. illustrating it for you or yeah and, and they lie to you hold, holding your hand through it <laughs> yeah well and they 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 misguide you and say this is going this way like you ever see perfect getaway with fucking Steve Zahn yeah. and uh, that movie, Jesus fucking Christ! I like at the at the end of that movie when they're doing the flashbacks. Some of them are like almost identical scenes with the characters and the situations, but then it shows them sneaking away, fucking smoking meth real quick and shit. It's like what the fuck? Like I don't like exactly like you said, holding your hand through it. At least with this, they they let you figure it out by looking at the characters' faces and they, they don't spell it out for you. No, that's true, and I do like that. I, I I felt like it was intelligent. Yes. And it respected the audience. Like it didn't it didn't think that or treat us like stupid people. You know, I really don't like when a movie talks down to you or explains everything to death and leaves nothing. For Jamie you. Lords of Salem did that. They spoon fed you everything. They literally narrated everything throughout the entire movie. Uh, don't even get me started. On what you can't saying. narrate. You you can't nar You cannot narrate a visual style, and that was the strong point of that film. So basically, it doesn't matter. Uh, it don't matter. All right. Well, we gave our ratings. That's the review. Uh, wow, it lasted longer than I thought. I ever thought we'd have nothing to say about this, but there we go again. We always do. Always do. Uh, I say go see it. Go see it if it's out there still. I, I don't think it is. I say go rent it <laughs> when uh, it comes it was, out in three it months. It was still here at my local theater um, as of yesterday. I don't know. As of Thursday, sorry. I don't know if it changed for the weekend or not. It'll still be in theaters. Yeah. I dropped my rating out there in public, so uh, if anybody goes by what I say, uh, I, I said it like opening weekend, so they had time. Uh, so it's what we all think. We're pretty much in the same boat. We're within 3.5 to 4, so that's... Yes, sir. Alright, we'll be back in a minute. And you're next, motherfucker.
<laughs> Were you planning on saying that? I don't know if you knew this, but there's a serial killer preying on girls like me. It has been a horrific period in Philadelphia. The calendar girl killer sent this letter to the press. 11 months, 11 female victims. It's been quite a year. My calendar is nearly complete. And what kind of artist would I be if I didn't save the best for less? A dark loner, bitter yet somehow sweet. It's me. Not funny, Ari. Not funny. This does kind of sound a lot like you. Who do you think it is? Chris. Phil. Phil's a photographer. John came into the diner today. Hey, Ari. What are you doing here? I missed you too. I heard he's been with like a dozen girls since we broke up. It's kind of disgusting. He's obviously no one's fool. Ah, guilty as God, sir. This is an open and close case. What about that guy who pays you in buttons? You keep all of that. It's a little more than 79 cents. I hate you so much. A one, two, three, four! You work two doubles in a row to keep an eye on me. It's dangerous out there. Bob put me on third shift until they catch my secret admirer. This is not a love letter. It's a death threat. Do you think? He doesn't just see these killings as killings. He sees them as a lead up to his art, if you will. And it's your one piece. What are you gonna do with that? Oh, it's gonna be amazing! <laughs> Terrifying. Yeah, yeah. All right, welcome back, guys. Uh, now it's times kind of like this. I just hate my life. Now my claim to fame is doing a pretty shitty, semi-successful podcast. Between these two guys that we got, you know, they've directed, written movies, and one of them's even ran for mayor. Now, if you you might know him as the guys behind Miss December. And uh, you'll definitely know their fucking names by the end of this interview. Please welcome Derek Lindemann and Tommy Avalone. Hello. Hello. <laughs> now, I'm a big fan of you guys because I listened, uh, I listened to a lot of podcasts, uh, specifically Kevin Smith. And, um, well, before we get into that and how much I love that interview that you guys did, uh, start from the beginning. How did you guys meet? How did you, uh, how'd you get going? Not, we're not going to get into how you ran for mayor, but uh, how did you... <laughs> <laughs> How did Batman and Robin come about? Well, I, well, I guess we'll give you the the short version, uh, <laughs> which is uh, uh, Tommy always wanted to make movies as long as he could remember, and I uh, didn't. So uh, we wound up going. We were in the same class in uh, our local community college in South Jersey um, for like video production, and I was going because I was going for like website design. I just had to take this like video production class, and Tommy was in there because. I don't even know why Tommy went to college. <laughs> yeah, a good uh, real quick side note. My uh, the teacher that was me and Derek's teacher, Lisa, she saw my movie in uh, the local theater, and the first day she's like, "I have some great expectations for you. I can't wait to see what you're gonna do in my class." And I didn't do the first two assignments. So I was, <laughs> and she's like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "Now we're we're at zero. You have yeah. no expectations for me. We can now have a real relationship." Yeah. Tommy was making <laughs> Tommy was making movies movies for years you know as a kid and then you know we what was it like 18 19 or we yeah. 18 and uh tommy just comes up to me and i'm just in class doing my work uh because i'm an awful student uh, <laughs> but i was pretending to be a good student for my first semester of college and, uh, and tommy comes up and he hands me like a flyer he's like oh hey my movie's playing and i'm just like that's great i'll now nah. <laughs> and, uh, and i didn't like awesome. Derek at the time because he was the other funny guy in class and you really can't appreciate the other funny guy yeah right Right, there's can, always going to be that battle, right? Yeah, that comes with age. Is that you yeah. can really start to appreciate people of your own ilk. So that was the, the first interaction that Tommy and I had, and he never liked me, and I really didn't know if he existed. Or not. I didn't care. But I actually went to go see his movie, and it was kind of fun because it was, you know, he just shot it himself with a camcorder, and and I always like telling stories. I was just like, that might be kind of cool. So I kind of didn't really even worry about that. I kind of just finished up community college, and then I just sort of said, you know what, I think I might want to make movies. And then I went to, I transferred to another, like, a state school, and, like, after I got out of that, I made a movie for, like, $3,000 with a camcorder, and it did pretty well in the festivals. And then, you know, it was out on DVD. And by out on DVD, I mean, like, you can probably find it at a GameStop for, like, two, <laughs> with, like, next time. And I think it's, you can buy it for, like, $5 with a Cat Williams DVD. And, and, and really, that's where you want to be with Cat Williams at a GameStop. Yeah, and then Tommy <laughs> saw it, and he hit me up, and he's just like, hey, maybe we should, uh, 
well, put, put I, our rocky past behind us. I also listened to the, <laughs> um, the commentary track, and they said, well, you know, we thought if Tommy could do it, why can't we? And I was like, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Like, it was like, I'm very neurotic. I was like, are you making fun of me? <laughs> that is true. That was one of the motivating factors that, that me and a friend of mine decided. We were just like, well, let's make a feature. And it, was, it wasn't if Tommy could do it, we could do it. It's like, well, Tommy's made four so far, so we can wow. probably one. That's why I said I hate my life, dude. You guys have accomplished so fucking much. And I just look back at my life and I'm like, well, I, I barely tied, tied my shoes today. You know, I mean, I, you guys are just you guys have been killing it since day one, dude. And yeah, that's so. So it makes you feel any better. I'm not even wearing shoes now. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> me today. Uh, that's all right. Jamie's not wearing any pants. We feel the same way. How uh, did you know? <laughs> uh, you get See, this is what I'm saying. Like, you said you found him on a commentary track. Like, I found you guys on a podcast. Is that, like, the template now, like, as far as, like, fellow geekdom goes? Like, you yeah. know, through, through, we just did Adam Green, too, and, and that was – we all we talked about was podcasting the whole fucking time. Yeah, I mean, I came from kind of the school – like, I never went to film school. I went to art school, which was great because it taught me that if you're going to do anything creative, like make movies or any – or I'm sure a podcast, you're going to be poor for a while. Yeah, <laughs> it's not forever till you die. Exactly. So uh, I always came from the school of like listening to commentaries and seeing what directors say about their movies. And like, if you could just you, know, you watch a hundred movies, and if you get like one decent thing that like you know you're not going to learn in film school from a director telling you how he did something and you see it happen right in front of you, that's kind I, of what I learned to make movies. I just learned by doing. You know, I mean, I I worked on other people's you know indie sets and my own, and like. I've learned so much from other people's mistakes. I mean, because yeah. everyone makes them, and it's it's really great when you're not the one making them, and you can. Actually <laughs> see them. Yeah, I, I feel like if you actually want to do anything, you'll actually seek out places to find other like-minded people. Right. And right. that seems to be what happened with me and Tommy. And then we've met a ton of other people along the way who, you know, we would assume are above us, um, but then they're just like, oh, we really admire what you do. Let's let's do something together. Wow, dude. And, and that's what I'm saying. Like, even when I heard you guys on that podcast, I'm like, wow, man. Like, and even Kevin said, now that's what I want to get into too. Now, like, okay, you guys had a movie. Was it backed by his uh, uh, podcast productions? Uh, not podcast productions, I'm sorry. With his uh, studio. How did that work? I, he picked it up. I mean, we, had, we had played uh, a lot of festivals. I think one near you. What's that? Um, what's the festival that you and Annie went to? Where, uh, where's that? Where are you at? They were Massachusetts. Oh, yeah, we played uh, Woods Hole. Um, Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, we played Woods Hole. Uh, yeah, that, that's a fucking 10-minute bike ride from my house. Oh, really? You ride a bike? I'm in Falmouth. That's in my town, yeah, dude. Falmouth, that's yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, that's, that's where Woods Hole was. Oh, ah, I feel okay. like that. I feel like I kind of grew up with you now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> dude, we, we, Tommy and Derek, we go back. <laughs> yeah, we go way back. We played festivals as Calendar Girl, and we had a uh, we got a film rep, and uh, she sold out a uh, Phase Four Films, which was working with uh, at the time Smodcast Pictures, now nice. Kevin Smith Club, and mm -hmm. um, we saw it as a perfect opportunity to get him attached. You know, especially since we had Brian O'Hara, and I'm a huge fan. I know that if anyone on the indie level is going to push a film, it's going to be Kevin. Yeah. So and it was we it was kind of cool because like we. Assume you know we're talking to Phase Four and the Phase Four is trying to set up the same with Kevin. We're just like, oh, that's great. We'll just throw his name on it, and I'm sure he'll never watch it, and I'm sure we'll never meet him, and I'm sure he'll never know who we are. Uh, <laughs> you know, hey, whatever. It's cool that he's trying to help his, you know, his name's trying to help us. And then it turned out that like it wasn't that at all because you know we've done a lot of things. Uh, when I say a lot of things, I mean a lot of small disappointing things. <laughs> where he, but he did remember you though, yeah. We had one movie that was bought by Lionsgate, and we're just like, oh, that's great, Lionsgate. And then they're too busy pushing Expendables 2, I guess, to really let <laughs> anyone know that our movie existed, you know, which makes sense. Um, I did buy Expendables 2. I haven't watched it yet. Yeah. Well, I have intentions. Yeah. I have intentions. Well, and so, you know, this thing happened with Kevin, and then Tommy uh, emailed Kevin, and he was just like, hey, we, you know, we got this movie that you may or may not have seen, but your name is definitely on it. Uh, we're going to be in L.A. You want to set something up? And he was like, I love the movie. Let's do a podcast. We'll talk about the movie. And I, the fact that he watched it blows my mind. And the fact that he was so cool and so open, he, you know, he records his podcast in his house. You just walk right into his house. And then wow. he I mean, what's what I as a producer, what my job is very uh, not too far away from being a stalker. Uh, and <laughs> Which case, so like I know, I I try to follow what everyone does, know where they're gonna be, and kind of right. know 
what they're doing and how they did it. So that way I can either use that or, you know, uh, just know everything that's the fact that he was working with phase four. I knew before our film rep did. And that's one of those things where like, I, I use that information to, so we can benefit off of it. And, and how was that when, when you realized, when you first heard that, okay, Kevin Smith's going to interview you about basically your, your story in the film business so far? I mean, because to me, he's like a fucking god, you know? And I don't know how your views are on him. But uh, to me, that would be like, all right, I've made it. Or some vindication on level that, okay, that's, that's a life moment right there. Yeah, it was. Um, except for the fact that we were fully expecting it to not happen. Because- oh, really? Well, it's just it's just such a unattainable thing, right. to, and you know, doing anything. I'm sure same thing with a podcast, same thing with a, a painter or you know a, a musician. They're just your successes are one to every ten disappointments. True. And True. so you know, at this point in time, we don't try to really. We'll only believe it when it ultimately happens, and then we'll mm-hmm. when it happens. So was, that was kind of the deal. Is like you know we we were looking for his house. We pulled up like a half hour early just so that we wouldn't be lost. We're waiting outside of his house. <laughs> for the text to say, guys, I can't do it. Yeah, we saw Penny Marshall drive by. <laughs> what the fuck? Sure enough, you know. It Wait, did, did you really, though? Because she was on some of his podcasts. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> That's awesome. You know, flip side with, with on, on my end is, like, I'm a huge, huge Kevin Smith fan. And, like, you know, you, you're saying that, like, you know, you're saying, oh, I haven't done this and we've done this. Like, I wanted to have that successful movie at 22. Like, I lived my life, like, kind of like Kevin Smith's thing. And it, like, it didn't necessarily happen. It was, you know, kind of years later. But, I mean, looking at Kevin's career and, like, I just knew so much about it. And, like, I saw him at Volgathon before. And there was this whole big thing. So, like, I was very, very nervous to be at his house. It's because, like, this was a, uh, a moment in my life that I knew if that happened, like, I felt like I have made something of myself. And, mm. uh you know, when he came up, like, I was really, really nervous, and, like, you hear his voice and footsteps before he turns the corner, and it's like, I'm freaking out, but as soon as he said hi, it was, like, the coolest dude in the world, and you just weren't nervous anymore, you yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's great. Well, and, and, and like I said, to me, that would be a big uh, life moment, so you guys should be proud of yourself, for real. And yeah. uh, j- just, to, like I said, I mean, yeah, he's a he's an approachable guy, but that's why I like him. You know, I listen to all his... Uh, you know, watch, watch, listen to all his podcasts, watch all his, um, all his specials and all that stuff. So, so mainly what he was talking to you guys about is this movie, Miss December. Now, I, I told Jamie about this, this movie, and she was like, I was like, oh, you know, we got to watch this. These guys coming up. Oh, I've seen that. I love that movie. <laughs> so it wasn't even like a, a homework type of thing. Jamie already saw it. I already saw it. And I love this book. Well, thank you I, very I, much. I've never heard anyone saying, oh, yeah, I'm familiar with that. Well, I mean, <laughs> Jamie knew. That's what I do, though. I mean, you know, I'm so. Jamie's a pro. I don't. And well, what I mean is, I I do this in a lot of outlets, so I watch all sorts of different things, and um, so mm. yeah, I mean, yeah. it's a fortunate thing because I'm exposed to uh, things that I wouldn't see if I just watched the mainstream stuff. Okay. Plus, I, I also I, work with a I work with an independent film festival, so uh, okay. The, <laughs> so that sort of thing interests me anyway. Was it, was it, was it, did you watch it? I, I'm so curious now as to how you watch the movie without uh, anyone telling you to. Um, well, no, it was actually recommended to me. Um, what? By who? Where I, are I, you? I, I can, no, I'm absolutely <laughs> not lying. I'm not lying. <laughs> it was recommended to me. I can't even remember now who it was, but it, would, but it was a journalist, a, a, um, like an online journalist somewhere on one of the sites that I was writing for, but I don't remember now who it was, but anyway, it was, it was just one of those things that comes into a conversation. And, um, uh, I talk about movies a lot, like, like a so- lot, like I have four regular podcasts that I do. Oh. So <laughs> that's, on, that's on the regular too. She's got about 22 on the side. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I do a lot of guest <laughs> spots. So I talk about movies all the time. So people are constantly throwing stuff at me. And if it sounds interesting, then I'll, I will seek it out. See, I feel so much more accomplished now than being interviewed by Kevin Smith. <laughs> well, I do yeah. have more podcasts than he does. You just did it at your leisure. <laughs> you That's right. No one made me. Um, <laughs> but uh, but I do though. I I did like this movie, and um, like one of the things I want to ask you. Okay, 
comedy and horror play well together. Uh, they, they, An American Werewolf in London is a good example of that. Even though that was intended to be a horror film, um, there is some, some amazing comedy in there that works beautifully with the horror. That's a, difficult, that's a really difficult balance to get mm-hmm. sometimes. And if you don't do it carefully, then you end up being too funny or it, you know, and it blows your horror or your comedy can just come off too black and fall flat. You know, so what did you find to be the most difficult part of trying to marry these two things? Um, all the things you said. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's funny that you you know that because I didn't know that. <laughs> Come on. And, you know what we wanted to do is we wanted to make a comedy, um, yeah, that had this sort of horror backbone, right. and that was the very simple task we set out to do, and not realizing how unbelievably difficult that is. And so what ultimately happened is we wound up doing a f- like three or four reshoots um, after the fact to add in well, – first we needed more comedy, so then we shot this thing with Gilbert Gottfried, and then we're just like, well, now it's too much comedy. Now we need some more horror, so then we shot the new opening where it has a girl getting killed in the shower, and then we just sort of had to re-edit everything. It was almost like – I was afraid we were going to get to the point where you're trying to level a table – and you just keep cutting off your legs yeah, until or, you have Yeah, or you're trying to cut a straight line into paper and you can't make it straight, so you just keep cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting and pretty soon you have no paper left. So we did we did two cuts. I mean, not two cuts, like we did two reshoots and we said, All right, this is probably as good as we're as as even as a, a medium as we're gonna get. And it was mm-hmm. just reshoots and it was just sort of finding out what you just said. It's very difficult to comprehend how difficult it is to pull that off without you know, being so invested in it and seeing which way it can go. It's, it's very, very difficult. Okay, so yeah. you had a lot of trial and error, I guess, and then just trying to find the right fit. I had a lot of trial and error, so much so that I never want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> or horror, straightforward from now on. It's just such a, a hard, not that I, you know, uh, am, am afraid of hard work, but it's just, it can fail so easily. Right. And like when you see a, like a horror comedy, like, you know, American Werewolf in London or, or like a Shaun of the Dead, you just say that's a great movie and you do not appreciate how unbelievably difficult it is to get that mix perfect. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And well, it gives you a whole new respect for the people who Absolutely. do that. So, I mean, you know, even though it was a difficult thing, I think you managed it very well. Um, and speaking of Gilbert Godfrey, though, like, I love that guy. I mean, so oh, much. We were talking about him earlier. Yeah, um, yeah is, was that written? I mean, did you do that just for him because you had him or – was that something that you just happened to find we, yeah, like, into? How do you do another character that's not Gilbert Gottfried and like put it in that voice? Like I couldn't imagine that could work. Yeah. So, uh, well, Gil, you know, we had shot that scene that he's in with another actor, a friend of ours, and uh, he did a great job. But it just wasn't. It has a small amount of funny. It was maybe like twenty percent funny and like eighty percent serious. And it's the first <laughs> scene, so you want it to be yeah. like. And so then we edit the whole movie, and we just we need a comedy punch out of the gate. So it's like, all right, let's let's do eighty percent comedy. Which you know, as soon as you bring in Gil, it turns to a hundred percent comedy. So Tommy just had Gilbert's contact information. It seemed like it was something he wanted to do. He's up in New York. We're in Philadelphia, so we just kind of drove him down for the day. And uh, we, you know, we gave him the script that was original, you know, from the movie. Then he just still looked at it as if no one has ever handed him a script. <laughs> and he's just like, I'm not going to use this. And he's like, that's fine. And then, <laughs> <laughs> you do a half hour, you know, you just do a couple takes until he figures out what's the funniest thing, and then you, uh, then you edit it together. I love it. I love that. I um, that's have great. you ever met Gilbert? I never have. No. He is the most interesting person in the world. Like he is a hundred percent not what you think he is. Yeah. It's almost mm-hmm. like what he is on ex- is on screen is saved up energy that he uses throughout the day and throughout yeah. the week because. I we picked him up in New York, which is a two hour drive, and he I went through like my whole car ride of conversations in like five minutes. He's he's very much of a yes. <laughs> really? That's correct. Yeah. How is that? How is that? It's, it's, it's amazing for all the right reasons. Yeah. Like it's just <laughs> like, like we were stuck in traffic, like and like he didn't like any of the music on the radio, so we turned it off. So it was like <laughs> off. <laughs> quiet awkward like you want to say something but you know he doesn't want you to say anything yeah. and like we're the people next to us in traffic like do they know that's gilbert godfrey next to them like, <laughs> you know, oh yeah, it's 
like he he saves up he stores all his energy by being calm and eating as much free food as possible. <laughs> yeah. And then as soon as it's action, he he uh, he becomes a uh, ever what everybody knows is Gilbert Gottfried. I mean, I've, uh, I've met him a couple different times afterwards, and you know, take him out, took him out to lunch and stuff like that. And it's just he barely talks, and he loves free things. It's like not even that he <laughs> accepted the free lunch. He was like a, it could have been a stranger going, <laughs> I have this free lunch you're willing to accept, and he was like, sure. Dude, I, everyone that I know, everyone that I've ever met, like out in Hollywood, they'll take anything for free. It's like he never turned down something free. Yeah. And uh, uh, like I ran into, hmm, I probably shouldn't say, but I ran into a guy right. from a popular movie at <laughs> at um, at a screening, and um, the first thing he does is like he just walks right up to me and he's like, um, do you know where the food is? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, he's over there. Um, and he's already, <laughs> <laughs> and he's already been into the liquor. So, um, it's like they hit all the free things first. And I guess, well, you never know when, the, you never know when the next project's gonna come along, and you gotta eat. <laughs> now, now, by him, you mean Danielle Harris? <laughs> no. Oh yeah, is that who it was? J- Jamie's enemies with Danielle no, Harris. I am, I am. Uh, <laughs> They're mortal enemies. No, oh, really? no, not at all. Not at all. Um, a couple, a couple of friends of ours has worked with her. Yeah, before. like the the director of photography and one of the producers on uh, Miss December. They made another movie that had her in it. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. <laughs> she meant they mentioned you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. They, they mentioned the battle on the commentary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's oh, shit. hilarious. Uh, um, well, no, and, and I was just going to say it was Joe Pilato. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So I think I wow. to say and then you said it anyway. I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I the, there's that's the power of editing. I won't have to uh Right, right. Cuz I'm right. totally you... cutting out all the Daniel Harris stuff. <laughs> I know. I, we could go for days with that shit. I'm, days. We are shit. not enemies. I just don't no. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what was that, huh? <laughs> no, me and Tommy at one time were, were what you would consider frenemies, and that worked out all right. Maybe right, you yeah, exactly. to start like a band or something. <laughs> you know? Exactly. You could put you, you could have Gilbert Godfrey on bass, dude. Yeah. Yeah, man. Well, as, like I said, I love this. Horror comedies are hard to do. Me and Jamie review a lot of them, uh, obviously, because. I mean, dude, being a horror podcast in itself, you're gonna go through how many shitty fucking movies. Oh yeah, I'm <laughs> sure. You know what I'm saying? But like, I'm not the smartest person in the world, but I think our gauge is pretty somewhat normal as far as like what's funny and what's not or whatever. So I appreciate a good comedy. I- I'm a huge stand-up comedian fan or whatever. So right when I saw this movie, I was like, yes, man, they fucking did it. And and isn't that funny? Like you said, you didn't even fucking know. Well, that may be the way to go, man, because, like, when people try too hard, and I'm not going to say anybody's fucking movie here, but a lot of people tried and failed. And let me just tell you this. This did not fail, and it fucking made me laugh a lot. And to see anything in a horror backdrop is the shit, dude. Like, I'm a big Holliston fan. Um, you know, like, that's kind of, you know, considered a straight comedy, but it's, it's you know, making Dream Warriors references and Scanners references and... And all and all the shit that you did with your movie, dude, it was fucking perfect. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to commend you on that. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, we think it's you know, it's uh, we, we tend to think it's a relatively smart movie. I guess so. That's why if somebody doesn't oh, yeah. like it, we can say well, they're just stupid. Yeah. Uh, it just it went over like your head. Finding, that's all. Yeah, it seems yeah. like it's finding its audience. You know, any any low budget sort of close to the close to the vest, close to the heart kind of film just can't really reach a wide market. So you just right. got to try to find your your audience, you know. And the fact that you guys are actually part of that audience that I now know is more than two people, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> Dude, it's at least six. Come on. Yeah, well, no. yeah. <laughs> being humble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and hey, don't don't tell yourself short because it it is a it is a great flick. Now, with that said, about how you said that about how you never want to mix those again or whatever, <laughs> is that like I know you guys have done a, a bunch of other movies as well and been involved in other movies, but uh. Tell me about the new project, I Am Santa Claus, because I know, you know, I don't know how much you both are involved in it, if you can elaborate more on that or whatever, but the premise is, it's a documentary, correct? That's yes. Correct. The documentary of Santa Claus uh, starting the first day after Christmas, correct? Yeah, it's, it's the people who betray Santa Claus and seeing kind of what they do on the off season, like what family do they go back to, what life do they go back to? 
Mm-hmm. We found some really, really interesting stories and interesting lives. Like uh, our one Santa from Detroit, he um, he got divorced, lost his job, lost his house, and then uh, moved into his daughter's basement and started portraying Santa Claus to you know make him happy. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a we have a gay Santa in Texas. There's a swinger <laughs> Santa in uh, Washington. <laughs> <laughs> I want to meet that guy. There's a guy in Long Island who's covered in tattoos. Yeah, he legally changed his name to Santa Claus. Yeah. And, and then there's also a lot of infighting between Santa Claus groups, like the Amalgamated Order of Real Bearded Santas versus the what? Fraternity. Huh? What? It's a what? what, what they got That's fraternities? Awesome. Yeah, yeah. like unions, kind of, but not really. <laughs> like an Elks Lodge. Yeah, very much like that. It's like, <laughs> like these they, – they're the, – an older generation that liked groups and stuff like that. So they made the amalgamated order of real bearded Santas. But at the time, <laughs> yeah. uh, around 2007, there was a lot of <laughs> infighting. Uh, and that spawned out the fraternal order of real bearded Santas. And a lot of, uh, the Judean uh, people's front. No, the people's front of Judea. <laughs> uh, Sorry, Monty Python reference. <laughs> it's funny that, you, that you're laughing because this is – Mine and Tommy's lies for the last close to <laughs> what, two, three years? Uh, about two years. About two yeah. years. So it's like, now, it's, is it not funny to you guys anymore? Because to me, I'm fucking dying over here. No, this is all, this is, this. you want to know how involved we are? This is normal for us. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm an, you know, uh, I'm an honorary member of the International Brotherhood of Real Bearded Santas. Oh, That's you're part awesome. of them. Oh, shit, he's mm-hmm. one of them. Oh, uh, one of them. <laughs> wow, um, dude. Well, now let's go. <laughs> why, this, why this fascination with Santa, though? Like, where did it go? Yeah, you guys must love Christmas, huh? Oh, actually, no. I hate it. No. Uh, really? Yeah, what? There's a bug on my wall. I just want to get it. Hold on a second. Well, then, <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I don't, I'll, I'll answer Tommy's question then. Okay. <laughs> oh, and he sees a mall Santa, and he just wonders. He's like, I wonder what that guy does on December 26th. Yeah, and it right? spawned this idea of like these guys with real beards. I'm not talking fake beards. They have real beards that take years to grow. Uh-huh. They shave them because <laughs> they won't grow back in time. They can't be Santa next year. Just kind of this idea is like, what? I, I think Tommy had the vision on his head. like, I wonder what that guy does in July when he has to go get groceries. I guess he just goes and gets groceries. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it was one of those things where I, I often wonder what a lot of people do when they go home. But like, uh, this is one of the things that we actually followed through and found out I was at uh, Chiller Festival. It's in uh, Precipity, New Jersey. It's oh, like yeah. a hard gym. Mm-hmm. And I saw our guy Frank from Long Island, who's a, a Santa Claus, who eventually changed his name to Santa Claus. And, I was, and he looked like, I, this guy had to be a Santa Claus. And I a- asked him, I was like, hey man, not to be a, not to be a dick. Are you, are you a Santa Claus? And he gave me his card. And, no. like, and he had a Facebook. And then inside that, like, I just found all these other Santa Clauses. And, you know, they say you really can't judge a book by its cover, but um, hold on one second. Actually, I have to stop. Um, <laughs> Paul's bleeding. Oh, Jesus. One second. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Well, we can just, uh, we can just wait. Who's bleeding? <laughs> <laughs> the walls are bleeding like The Shining. Dog came oh. in. It- I guess now there's blood all over it. Tommy's so neurotic, he's going to clean this up for hours. It's going to be hilarious. Oh, poor doggy. Well, the, dog's, I mean, the dog was happy as pie. but Okay. We, we oh. just reviewed a movie that uh, the dog died at the end, and I gave it a zero, because that's what it deserves for killing a dog. Can't do that. Well, that's, I mean, I don't know if any of this is going to make the cut. That's what we gave the, uh, uh, <laughs> that's what we gave Ari a cat. Because anytime your protagonist has an animal, yeah. The, Will automatically root for the protagonist because they they're always subconsciously what's going to happen to their animal if they die. Right. Well, you know what's interesting is um, I don't really care what happens to the human, but it's always the animal that yeah. that I care yeah. about. So like, well, like even in Jaws, like I'm always on the shark side. Like, and yeah. which is that's my favorite movie. But every time I'm like, get him! I'm like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I hate people. Gotta eat. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, now how it's... can people buy your DVD if they choose to? Oh, they would go to um, – see, Tommy knows the web address. I'm pretty sure it's, <laughs> it's MissDecemberMovie.com. Oh, that is – yeah, yeah, I've been to that website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fire right. and it, you know, it comes right from us. Uh, our other producer, John, will take it from a stack and 
put it in an envelope and send it to you, which is great. So no one else gets a cut of it, which is right. something uh, Phase 4 actually did was pretty cool. They let us keep all our DVD rights. They were really right. only interested in, um, in on-demand and iTunes, mm-hmm. so, which yep. is pretty cool because then, you know, if the movie actually, they'll do the legwork to kind of have it take off, you know, through these digital platforms that where our audience would most likely be found. And then right. if it take off, you know, and, and a larger company really wants the DVD rights for something, we still own them and we can sell them to someone else. So it's a pretty I, cool I, thing that Kevin's doing with Phase 4. They're both, they're both really, really good. Uh, um, yeah, they're really looking out yeah. for people like us. Well, and I was going to ask you, too, I mean, you know, this is kind of a personal question, but do, do you make anything off of those movies? I mean, I know you said, you know, yeah, you're the two people that have seen it, but you know, come on, give yourself a little credit. It's It's been around. I know I know some people that have seen it. Now, I, it's funny because I don't even consider myself the, the, the horror dude. I mean, I am to some people and shit like that, but we do watch a lot of movies, and a couple people I have talked to in passing that do the same thing have seen it or whatever. So are you making a buck? Or? Uh, it, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? It's like we we the way everything is set up is that, you know, I, I mean I didn't I didn't make a buck, but I also didn't put out a buck. Right, so you right. Know, we have a lot of investors, which is mostly friends and family, and, and they gotta be taken care of first mm-hmm. in full before we can start to see anything. Yeah. So, you know, once once they get their money back and then, you know, Thanksgiving dinner is not awkward again, that's when <laughs> Yeah, we'll start putting away some money. But, you know, it, it's not really about that because we made it for so cheap. And, and the people that invested didn't really invest in in making, uh, you know, making money off a movie. They kind of invested in us. Right. Right. So, right. You know, cool. whether or not your investment comes back as quickly as we were hoping, it's, it's the fact that we're still working and we're doing bigger and better things. And and it was kind of a, a different course than we had planned. But it, it's all. It's all working out nice, you know, and I think that's kind of really the big reward for the investors that we picked. What, do you, what now is that probably the most difficult part of the whole thing is, is getting the money and, and getting it moving in, in that sense? Or what do you think? Because like, you wrote this too, right? Or, or, or... Wrote it, yeah. It was an original script, and then I sort of I, I, I rewrote a lot of it for um, sort of our budget constraints and our time restraints. Mm-hmm. Right. And, you know, you're right. Tommy's like, you know, we can get Corbin for a half day, right? Two scenes. Right, <laughs> right three hours i'm like all right great no problem um the the money is i i don't know because that's not my job uh that's our other producer john and he does a great job of pulling together exactly what we need not a penny more not a penny less (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) um and and it's just sort of um like i said if you're ever looking to, to get investors for something they're not going to invest to make money if they did they put it in a cd for 10 years they put it in a mutual for 30 years they're right. they're investing in your project they're investing in you because they believe in you and mm-hmm. you know that's kind of what you have to look for in investors um right. you know and it's also nice to kind of uh look out for people that are a little more flexible and try to take we, we like to take a little a little bit from a fair amount of people mm-hmm. uh, that way no one has to mortgage their house and then you have that on your conscience because that's hard to sleep at night when <laughs> someone's <laughs> you know someone's <laughs> I call them because they're going to take their house and, you know, because right. you want to, you know, do a reshoot with Gilbert Godfrey. But well, <laughs> yeah, right. Well, so overall, like looking back, OK, so you, you said you weren't in it for the month. Like you said, you didn't spend that much going in or whatever. And you, you had good experience on this film, correct? I mean, overall, you said it was a learning experience and you'll never do it again. But you take a lot from it, obviously, moving on, right? Well, I, I would never do the horror comedy again. That's not true. Right, right, right. I'm full of shit. Um, <laughs> it, but it's just, you know, what, what you learn from it. What I really learned is that is that the script is everything. Mm-hmm. And you can't sort of say it's so many people, so, so, so many people low budget. Just like, well, the script's pretty good, but, you know, it'll all come out in editing. It does not. It never comes out in editing. <laughs> right, <laughs> well, right. if you don't shoot it to begin with, it's not going to be there when you go to edit, you know. Yeah. And I have found indispensable storyboard 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 yeah yeah it it just it's not so much what i found it's not so much in the actual shooting of scenes and shots it's the characters that have to be created right right it'll take a lot with that um you know once they read it but it's just like you you gotta take you have infinite time before your movie is made to get your script as perfect as it can be and Mm -hmm. you have a finite of time during filming and though, even though people will think that they have as much time as they need to edit something, not when you owe people money. <laughs> you know, right, you right, right, right. Want to know that their money is working for them. 
So the only time where you have ample time is when you're writing that script. Right. And if it's not that good, then just let someone else do it. You know, yeah, and so right, people get hung right. up. It's like, well, this is what I want to make. And it's like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I, I've known so many people that have made this script that they want to make, and it ruins their lives because they're so disappointed. And then they're just yeah. so real. I'm just not that good. But it's like. I right, do. Yeah, you almost have to get it fucking right the first time around writing it. Because really, when you when you don't and you don't have it right and you get there, you're really putting putting a lot on, on the actor to kind of create something from nothing. So, yeah, you're right, man. you got to have it all on. You yeah. be selfish about having the script exactly the way you think it is because it's that's how you want it. And once it's done, right. it's going to see how great you are. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievably selfish and wastes everybody's time and it hinders the actors. It just it's just not the way to go. I mean, spend right. as much time getting that script from any level. If you're making a, a short for one hundred dollars or if you're making a movie for one hundred million dollars, the script right. has to be the most important thing. And everybody says it, but you really don't realize how important until you're sort of trying to save something that you wish you would have just spent another day on fixing it before you even shot it. Right, right, right. Exactly. Now, sorry, uh, sorry guys, I'm back. Uh, my dog is bleeding. <laughs> is he okay? Is she okay? Yeah, we're going to take him to the vet in a little bit. But uh, he uh, he slipped and, like, his nail busted open and he's bleeding from, like, two paws. Oh, no. Poor little puppy. Yeah. Oh, so, man. But yeah, Santa's gonna be a good movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. No, because all right. So we were. T- <laughs> I am Santa Claus because all right. When I first heard that, I, you know, you think, well, okay, what does Santa Claus do? Follow, follow Santa Claus the day after uh, Christmas. Okay. And then I started thinking about it, dude, and it really did fucking set in. Like, why? And then I started getting really curious. Like, yeah, what does he do? And then I, I say that's the best way to go about a documentary is to, uh, you know find the notion of, okay, I find that really appealing and just go for it. Because I did the same thing once I heard that you were doing that. I'm like, I got to fucking see this movie now. Like, when are you releasing it? Like, what the fuck, you know? <laughs> so yeah. it, it had it had that effect on me. And I found that any, because um, we were laughing and you guys said, yes, this is your life. But in all seriousness, it does sound very, very intriguing. And I'm surprised nobody's done it before either. Like, you, well, you think about it. Yeah. They've tried. Uh, but, I mean... People have done movies on Santa, and we didn't really realize it when we started. We tried to never um, – for when I was doing uh, uh, Miss December, I didn't really want to watch any horror movies because I didn't want to see how other people do it. Like we, we try to shelter ourselves from things to mm-hmm. kind of get the ball rolling. And then I know Tommy started watching a lot of documentaries after the fact to kind of see how they're made once we had the concept. But people make Santa movies all the time, but it's more about Santa – as this sort of flawless legend and it's just not it's not what makes movies good when you when you make a documentary on a fictional character you know it's really hard uh for it to be there like a lot of these guys like we would tell them like look you know we have to show some bad of you to understand the good it's a it's a page turner and all that stuff we didn't follow around santa claus we follow around men who portrayed santa claus you know <laughs> We've went to like 19 different states, interviewing different Santas, uh, following these guys with their lives and their 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 grandpas, their fathers. You know, they're the real men. They're grumpy old men. They're re- you know retired. They're re- these real people that just happen to have a beard, wear a lot of red, and you know are borderline crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is there like um is there some sort of screening process that Santas have to go through? You know, or could you run into Kid Touch or Santa? Yeah, we, the thing is, <laughs> yeah. in the uh, the Fraternal Order of Real British, a lot of the organizations, they have background checks. And and you have to have background checks and a lot of times uh, your own insurance. So that way, you know, if any kid were to happen to trip off coming off your lap, like, you wouldn't be sued. Huh. Like. I mean, like, these kids are brittle, you know, like, and they would grab their arms to, like, get them off his lap, you know, and sometimes they would bruise, you know, so there's yeah. there's insurance that has to happen. And if you've never noticed in the recent Santa photos, you always have to have both hands present, you know, and, or else you could possibly be <laughs> sued. Wow, yeah. I never even considered wow. that. Look at photos of you with Santa when you were a kid. 
uh, everybody can do this too. It'd be a fun <laughs> little like you know when there's like liner notes and Led Zeppelin that sort of you know whatever. But if you actually look at photos of you with the sand when you're a kid, they'll, you won't see both hands. Sometimes they'll have a hand around your back or something. Like, and then the closer it gets to the modern era, both hands have to be showing at all times. Interesting. No, I and, didn't actually have a picture of me on Santa's lap until I was 17. But. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that gentleman is Jamie Jenkins. Yeah, that's me. Um, but no, I'm I'm dead serious. I never I I uh, I didn't take pictures with Santa when I was a yeah. kid. So it's not even and it's not like I was afraid of it or anything. It's just you know I wasn't one of those kids that like you try to drag them in line and they start screaming immediately and uh, we just didn't do it. So yeah. I don't even know what the experience is really like. Um, and you are you are there are some of our Santas that you as a child would infuriate them, that you wouldn't be so excited to see Santa out and about, you know, wearing really? regular clothes. Like there are <laughs> some of these guys just need the attention so bad uh-huh. and they just get almost not indignant. It just kind of ruins their day. If a kid <laughs> just isn't all about Santa. Huh? Well, we, that was just, um, I guess it was just a family guy. So, Hey, Hey, oh, hello. Here we go. <laughs> um, I mean, like we were just always, you know, I was probably five when I learned there was no Santa and it was just by, you know, there was just no magic there for me. But I can understand where there would be and in ways in several times I've kind of wished there was, you know, so like I'd like to get excited if I see a Santa, but I don't. <laughs> I actually collect Santa Clauses, though, which is interesting. I have a huge, huh. huge Santa collection because at Christmas time it looks like. Santa threw up all over my house is really what it looks like. I do the same thing at Halloween, but it's not something I ever believed in as a child, but I do think it's, I think it's fascinating. I love the lore and, you know, I kind of wish it was real. So well, yeah, right? it is. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, the thing is, what's interesting too, is like, you don't think about it, but like, these are people who are in your family photos, like once every year and you don't think twice about who they are and they have their own lives and it's just it's very very interesting you know this you know every most people not you i guess uh take their pictures with santa claus and it's just <laughs> like it's a milestone like oh that was the year this happened oh remember that santa this this right. and it's just like now these guys have like you know their own story like if you were in texas and in this one mall did you know your one santa is a nude model <laughs> he's a nude yeah he's a gay model <laughs> what yeah, what you, the I mean, fuck? like bearweekly.com. Well, could he not lose his Santa position if people found out about that? I mean, is that something that would be a hot button? Well, it's a very interesting thing because, as he puts it, uh, the only way anyone would know he does that is if they oh, oh. and like him, and then they would <sighs> they would not have a problem with it either. Very good point. And as long as hands are in those positions, who cares, right? So that, I, I get to our 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 gay Santa. Uh, down in Texas, he is. I would trust my children with him more than anyone. Oh no, I I don't think it's a matter of that. I just think it's um, I don't know. It's just one of those things like when Valerie, I mean Valerie, when uh, Van- like Vanessa Williams, pizza, Vanessa sure. Williams, you know, was Miss America, then lost her title because sure, you know she did sure. some nude modeling. So it's she um, did? yeah yeah, oh, yeah um you were oh you're too young dan i'm sorry I forgot. it was a huge deal but um <laughs> but um you know i don't know does, does... But you you think that and a lot of a lot of you know younger people from our generation think that but among the santa community there is some you know every they all try to pretend that they're perfect but right. it's no secret that nobody is perfect right and so they'll all try to point their finger at whoever to say, that's not the way you Santa, when they have another finger pointed at them with someone saying, well, that's not how you Santa. Right. And is that right. a real verb? So is, it's, it's, is that, the is that an industry that, verb? <laughs> yeah. The, the idea of the documentary is that nobody is perfect. But mm. for the you know minute that uh, your kid is on their lap, they try to be as perfect as possible so you have a moment that lasts a lifetime. That's ah, really. That actually, like that's nice to hear, though. Really, I mean, it's nice to hear that these people care as much about what they do because, to some kids, it really is a big deal. And to some parents, you know, just every year taking their kids to get the photos, it's like you said, it's a milestone. It's a big and help to you, you know, like to think that they give a damn. 
it's hard to raise kids. And, you know, a lot of the Santas will say that, you know, parents will thank them year to year just to say, you know, it's July and they're acting up. And I can say, you know, you're going to see Santa in six months. So, you know, you better behave. And it, it, you know, a lot of them feel that that it really helps. You know, they help a lot of people by doing it. And, and I, I mm -hmm. tend to agree with them for the most part. Yeah. Yeah, and, no, I, I do. And an added bonus, we have WWE Hall of Famer Mick Foley yep. being Santa Claus. Mick Foley. Mick Foley. Yeah, dude. Yeah, talk talk more about him. I was What's just about to ask that question. That's so funny. Okay, go. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no, Mick, uh, we, we put a wrestler in every single one of our movies. Mr. December has Al Snow, and this one has Mick Foley. Right, right. And yeah. uh, so we, uh, we reached out to him because we knew he loved Christmas so much, and he was his game. You know, he took some Santa classes in Chicago and <laughs> – uh, bleached his beard uh, white, went to Sands Village and yeah. put it on. And it's like you forget that, like, it, how great of experience this is because we're hanging out with these grumpy old men for yeah. the rest of the year. <laughs> yeah, right. It, it, oh. it wasn't exactly game. You did have to have Tommy Dreamer vouch for you, right? Right, right, yeah. Oh, and, and Barry Ballstein. <laughs> and Barry, yeah, Barry, uh, who was also helping us, he directed Beyond the Mat. Uh, so oh, he's kind oh, of no okay. I love that a documentary mentor on, on this yeah. project. So. Yep. Dude, that's, wow, dude, that's incredible. And oh, and by the way, I love that fucking promo that you shot with with Mick Foley. I reposted that today. That's you know who didn't like it? Uh, the Santas. So it's like, why is he yelling? I don't get. It. <laughs> why isn't he in costume? I like I, I like one of our one of our Santas who's like seventy years old. He's like, I think you've got enough mileage out of Mick Foley. Let's let's more have more of us. I was like, ah, you have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> it's great well and i posted that and i post i reposted the uh kickstarter too so um yeah we got the uh santa claus kickstarter so everybody click on that you guys want to talk about uh some of the incentives on that a little bit or yeah we just posted a video uh yesterday about what a 500 hundred dollar incentive does and it's you could have uh you can go to one of mick foley's comedy show with three of your friends get four wanted dead or alive t-shirts and have a dinner with mick foley afterwards uh, and uh, there's other things too, like uh, uh, voicemails by Mick Foley, video message by Mick Foley. Uh, he'll follow you for a year on Twitter. There's even. A... <laughs> what yeah. happens after the year? Does he just stop? Oh, yeah, you're done. <laughs> well, I mean, I think if you are really on your best behavior, really send out a couple really nice tweets that Mick likes, I got a feeling I'll hang on to you. But it's yeah. a trend yeah, yeah, yeah. basis. You better use those characters wisely. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And then, and then uh, you know, there's other things. There's um, uh, a weekend at Sands Village with Mick Foley. Ride the rides, have dinner yeah, with Mick. Uh, that's fun. WWE, yeah, WWE tickets to SmackDown and have dinner with him and two other wrestlers. Uh, I think about the dinner, isn't he? <laughs> All the Santas are about the dinner. <laughs> One, two, uh, where you get like an hour a conversation with me and Tommy about how to sort of make movies on the cheap and try to get distribution, which might be kind of cool for some uh, some low budget uh, up and coming people. We'll try to help them as best as we can. Absolutely, it beats talking to us assholes, right? I mean, we're not going to retain any of your information. Yeah. Package for free. So just... <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we just got that for free, Jamie. Sweet. <laughs> Give me more incentives. <laughs> no, see, this is the thing though, about uh, about Kickstarters. They're always difficult, but the the one thing about our fucking fans is they're also wrestling fans. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people getting involved. Everyone's a wrestling fan. That's what I've found. Exactly. <laughs> it's really surprising sometimes how many people. You, when you find out someone's a wrestling fan, I mean, you know, there'll be an 86 year old woman yeah. or a 14 year old boy. You know, yeah. it's interesting. And it, it's yep. an instant camaraderie. It's it's yep. it, I, I love wrestling. There was a time, you know, as many people in your teens, you're just like, oh, it's cool for that. I like girls and boobs. <laughs> you get water. You're just like, you know what? These guys are good at what they do. I I like it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I agree, man. If so much of your fan base is wrestling fans, then we should tell you all the other wrestlers are in the movie. Oh, yeah. We got all so much about Santa Claus. It's possibly <laughs> selfish on our behalf, but, you know, because we're such fans. There are so many. We got a uh, Blue Meanie is actually a really close personal friend of ours. We put him in all our movies. Right. Uh, he shows up in this one. Tommy Dreamer, like we said, he's actually, I think there's, in the Kickstarter, uh, him and the... Mick actually have a thing on Kickstarter with Santa. Yeah, Santa heckles him at a comedy show. Yeah. 
and then a Tommy Dreamer steps in to save the day. But Tommy's in the movie. Uh, who else? Who else we got? We had Diamond Dallas Page. GDP. Oh. Uh, Mick did a stand-up show with Roddy Piper, so we got uh, a little bit of Ooh. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, and uh, drum roll, please. Yeah, because this is the big one. We we thought we really couldn't mark out any more for anyone other than Mick at this point. Uh, oh. Then we did get to meet and interview uh, the King. The King. Jerry. The king. No. Memphis, Tennessee. Wow. Oh. Because <laughs> he's another nice guy, huge Christmas fan. Yeah. Uh, but you know, Mick is Mick is great. I love Mick. I love all the wrestlers. But I've never sat down with anyone that is pop culture royalty before, like Jerry Lawler. It's just you, you start oh. talking to him, and it's just the whole Andy Kaufman, the everything. Yeah. He's wrestling, mm. and it's unbelievable to be to just talk to him, and he's such a nice, cool guy too. So basically, what you're saying is this documentary is going to be the fucking shit. Yes. Yeah. I and guess. you can <laughs> that way at IamSantaClausMovie.com. Yes, sir. And I want to thank you guys again for being here. I had a fucking blast. I know Jamie did. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Ho- hey, time. we'll have you guys on again soon, and uh, it, when the movie comes out, and uh, we'll do it again. Awesome. Cool. And uh, all right, guys. And our Miss December website is MissDecemberMovie.com. Yeah. Check that out. Oh yeah, definitely check out. Well, you know what? I would just recommend checking out these guys. Period. Do you have Facebook or Twitter you want to throw out there? Do we? Oh, I, I, you don't have Twitter. I don't have a Twitter. I'm just Tommy Avalone. (laughs) A V A L L O N E. (laughs) Oh no, you can check out actually all our movies. They're at Double Windsor Films. There you go. That's a better way. That's kind of all our stuff. There you go. And of our other movies, movies, everything you need uh, to know about us is on there. If you care to give a shit about us. All right, so and, just check it out, people. They do what right, I guys. they do what I tell them. It's okay. They yeah. do. So you fucking listen to Jamie J. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming on. Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Oh, Jamie, good job. Oh, they were nice guys. Nice. Were... Thanks. <laughs> <Come> <laughs> <laughs> they are nice guys. Imagine if we were talking mad shit. Oh, oh man, oh, that's that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Fuck Tommy and Derek. <laughs>